make sure everything's working on Twitch. It is not, it is given. There, for some reason I had this weird display thing on Twitch. Alrighty. So, uh, last time, you guys uh, found yourselves together in a tavern uh, on the outskirts of some woods. Simple enough place to spend the evening. Ended up getting assailed by a wide variety of undead. Uh, managed to survive the night. Well, most of you. Uh, and uh, made your way afterwards to the the city of Basilzan, uh, which is pretty far removed from the majority of the conflict uh, that is kind of spilling out from the uh, the death of the emperor at the hands of the orc drudge. Um, in the in the months that have passed since that night. Uh, you guys have picked up some some training in various pursuits uh, divine mystical roguish fighting etc uh, but you have decided that there's there's good coin to be made as an adventurer it is uh, it is uh, significantly better than uh, the you know the stipend you would get hauling wood or guiding people or anything of that nature um, you have uh, over time come to realize that uh, you work together well as a team your uh, your friend uh, your friend Ruth has gotten some experience with the with the priests of the Horned King in the woods. Um, Bismarck has uh, found a magician under which to train, a wizard under which to train, uh, considering his study of astrology and pursuit of the arcane arts. Uh, Thagor has uh, basically honed his martial skill uh, and has also reacquainted himself with uh, somebody he's fought with or along or beside for a, uh, a young human named Sif. And you guys have decided, you know what, this is, uh, this is really not a bad life. Uh, it's dangerous for sure. So is going into the woods every day to like chop down trees. Uh, the pay is significantly better, uh, and the, to the point you've gotten yourselves uh, outfitted and equipped with some uh, some more suitable gear, some armor, some shields, and uh, you guys have. Uh, You've tried to find a home for the for the baby that Crunch left you with, um, but for uh, for a variety of reasons, nothing quite felt right. You didn't. Have I been able to determine anything more about the lineage of this baby? You know, given some time for research. Um, you've managed to determine that the, the baby is, uh, it is of the lineage of one of the noble families, like one of the emperor's cousins sort of thing. Uh, other than that, uh, give me an intellect roll with a boon because of your, uh, your heraldry. All right. Intellect one boon, right? Yep. Uh, 
All right, rolling high is good in this game. Yes. All right. Um, so what you've managed to determine is that the baby is definitely of of noble love, blood, of noble lineage. Uh, with all of the turmoil that's happening in the empire to the uh, to the west of you, uh, currently there is no there is no direct next of kin to the emperor. There is no legit claim to the throne. There's no potential threat to to Drudge's claim of the throne. Unless this baby happens to be that closely tied to the line. Well, that would pay a lot. And paying a lot's a very good thing because the more money we have, the more books we can get. The more books we can get, the more we learn. Um, so in the uh, in the little town of uh, or city of Bazazan, uh, you guys have basically scraped together enough as adventurers to to have a, a small like little cottage of your own. Um, you don't have to worry about renting tavern rooms while you're in the city or anything of that nature. Uh, if you guys look under the journal tab in Foundry, you should have access to some information that you've picked up over the last couple of months. Yep, I see it. So if uh, if Sif would like to introduce herself and uh, and you guys can just kind of go over like whatever you think would have been the high points uh, over the over the last couple of months while you were busy you know doing the little doing the fetch quests and doing the well I've got rats down in my basement I'd sure pay some adventurers to clear them out and all of those kind of like you know beginner level MMO quests. Whatever you think would be the high point of what your character has done over the last couple of months that you would share with the group as you're like having supper together or whatever. Well, Sif is a human. Uh, she's uh, around 30 years old, seems to be. Brown hair, brown eyes. Uh, she's five foot two, 147 pounds. Um, some of that appears to be muscle. Uh, she has been working as a constable and uh, tells a, a story how uh, she had managed to get some of the Emperor's family away, um, you know, away safely. Uh, she also tells a funny story about when she was young and gambling quite a bit. Uh, about how she won a tiny idol of a demon carved from a green stone. And she shows it. It's about two inches high. Creepy looking. Yeah. You want me to take a look at that? Oh, you can if you'd like. As long as you give it back. She passes right. the, the little stone over. Yeah, Bismarck kind of catches it with, like, lays it flat on his scorpion tail and takes a takes a long look at it, inspects it as as best he can. Um, he does have a new magic um, profession, so can he discern anything from it? Uh, you can make a make an intellect check with uh, with a boon. There you go. Oof, at twenty. Um, yeah, you can you can tell that. I mean, demon statues are they seem to be cropping up more and more uh, amongst practitioners of the arcane, uh, the arcane arts. They're uh, 
usually just kind of like you know little little cut cot, uh, keys that sort of thing nothing terribly important but this one is of a specific demon as opposed to just kind of a general you got a name for that thing I do it is a it is a statue of a demon referred to as the skull king The Skull King? Yes. So what do you think? Creepy, huh? More than creepy. One, one sec. And he'll take one of his um, many arms to uh, arcane a um, few arcane gestures, mutter some words that um, People can hear but don't understand. Like the, the the words are lost as soon as they reach your ears. And I'll cast uh, sense magic. Okay. So yes, uh, you do detect. Uh, there's a very faint magical essence. Not so much that it's like there's not a, a curse on the idol or a spell in effect, but it just it has this it has this presence. It just it feels wrong it feels hungry well I don't think this is very good at all more maybe on the line of um, our druid fellow here than it is for me but I don't want to be anywhere near it I'd suggest you bury it or throw it in the sea did you, did you think that the Skull King would be a friendly, happy, happy chap? <laughs> Maybe bringing toys to the boys and girls? We'll gather around with the jolly Skull King. No, I don't. I don't know if that's the way it goes. I'm not a demonologist, but um, yep. give it a name. And what I'm feeling out of this thing, I don't. I, I don't. I don't like it very much. The real problem uh, in this city is the damned troglodytes. They, they've they got a cult that they're starting and they're, they're catching on uh, among lepers and beggars and bringing their filth and inbred ways into the, into the local towns. Yeah, dirty troglodytes. You always assume that there's a troglodyte problem. We've, we've never actually because seen there that. is because there is a troglodyte problem. They call themselves mothers' children. Of course, they're mothers' children. It's a stupid name because they're damned stupid, dirty troglodytes. That's a bit harsh. Sif just shakes her head. I've never seen anything. <laughs> like what you're describing. Have another beer. But if you saw it, you'd, you'd know. You'd know it was bad. Regardless, we have much bigger problems. As long as there's no zombies. Zombies? How do you think you get zombies? From troglodytes? From troglodytes, because they're so damn dirty and stupid. As I said, bigger problems. Uh, the stars are not where they're supposed to be. Are they not in the sky? Well, yes, that's a the point. <laughs> they're in the sky, but they're, 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 they've moved. And uh, according to my mentor, uh, that, that's a very, very bad thing. Uh, Stoviar, he he tells me that there's that there's something bad coming. I, I don't know what it is. Something well, bad coming. Something bad has been here for a while now. But you're carrying it around with you. Maybe that's the problem. Well, the the weird little monkey thing. Well, like, the magic seems pretty light. They probably can't move stars, but the stars moving, typically, yeah. historically, bad. 
And what do you propose we do about the, the stars? Don't know. Just throwing that out there. So you're aware that bad things are probably going to happen and it isn't my fault. Uh, and you've been forewarned. I've been thinking about this all night. So you sleep all the time. I don't sleep. That's why I take care of the baby overnight and you take care of the baby during the day. You still have that baby? Somebody's got it. It's daytime. I, I, it's past my. I'm night duty. You guys day duty. Where's the baby? Well, it's got to be around here somewhere. <laughs> it's not moving that fast yet. Um, just to sort of warn you guys, um, that baby, uh, people are looking for it. Well, that would be the first time that I'm hearing of this. Isn't that a good thing? Uh, depends. So, remember I mentioned that I got some of the family of the Emperor away from danger? Yes. Yeah. Um, there are people looking for that family. And there are mentions of a baby that has gone missing. Is there a reward? Uh, well, it depends on who you contact. I mean, petty nobles and independent kings are looking for it, so one of them might offer it, or they might just send their guards to kill you while you sleep and take it. I'm not sure what they want to do with it. That seems a bit extreme. Do you happen to know which family this is? Chris? Uh, pretty much what you've heard is uh, just a, a variety because essentially when the when the emperor was killed his force of personality that was kind of holding the, the empire together rather tenuously just fell to the wayside uh, a lot of the a lot of the the petty kingdoms and the the nobility uh, are like, oh, we're not going to follow any orc, that's for damn sure. Um, so the Empire is, or the former Empire, is currently embroiled in a fairly bloody civil war. Um, so any of, the, any of the noble families that can produce a legitimate heir might be able to get these feuding kingdoms together. But right now, it's a lot of like, I've got a claim to the throne. No, I've got a claim to the throne. No, I've got a claim to the throne. Uh, conversely, they may be wanting to find any legitimate heir to stamp out the potential of a legitimate claim. Well, I'm, it'll make a fine wizard someday. What'll make a fine wizard? Maybe. Baby can be a wizard. He did say someday. They, they grow up. They're, they're like you. But it take far too long. Well, I mean, it's about a quarter of my age, so... I, I'm fairly new. If you didn't know. But any, anyway, um, we should find out what to do about the baby that does involve going into the middle of civil war. Oh, really? Or getting stabbed in the night. So you guys, uh, you guys have spent some time trying to, to figure out what to do with the baby. Uh, you have found a, a couple 
in uh, in Basil Zen that you feel comfortable having them watch the child. Um, the sort of thing. It's it's basically there as you can tell. There's probably plot elements tied to the child, but at the same time, I'm not gonna like tie a bunch of adventures down with somebody going like, "Well, you guys go storm the castle. I gotta stay with the baby." Uh, so you do have you do have a family in Bazozan that don't seem to give off the same vibes that everybody else that you've thought about pawning the baby off onto does. So you've got somebody that you can you can trust to, to hold on to the baby while you go adventuring. All right. Well, that sounds sorted. Yeah. So with that, like I said, it's it's been a couple of months. So this is essentially conversations that have happened over time. Um, as I, as I explained, we're not doing day to day existence of your characters. When you guys go on to an adventure, it is a high point of that particular time frame. So, with that in mind. Uh, you guys have been sent on various errands for your your trainers, your instructors, um, or just out to uh, to make some coin, uh, traveling through the the southern parts of uh, 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 Bargrandia, which is the kind of the province that you're in. Um, the southern border borders an area called the Patchwork Lands, which is uh, a, a loose conglomeration of uh, of tribes and clans and kingdoms that's never been unified any one leader so it's like independent city states for lack of a better term uh, every once in a while they get a little bit uppity and they try to uh, try to cross the border but the uh, the priests of the of the horned king tend to protect the borders rather zealously But as you guys are making your way back from your various odds and sods and errands and things of that nature, uh, it is uh, like mid to mid late September. Uh, Ruthless, you would be aware that you are uh, you are coming pretty much right up to the autumn equinox. So, yeah, everybody should be able to uh, to adjust their music volume independently. You can turn it all the way down if you find it uh, annoying or distracting. You can turn it up if you think it's awesome, whatever. The music is all provided uh, via a uh, Humble Bundle that I picked up where the guy's like, hey, feel free to use this for your games and your ads and your streams and whatever, so. Cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, it was like uh, three, four hundred, four hundred tracks of assorted fantasy type music and some science fiction stuff and everything. Yeah, that's a nice touch. Yeah. It was, it was like 30 thirty ish dollars, so it's like sweet. Uh, so yeah, so you guys are you guys are traveling. It's uh, it's getting on to uh, to sunset. It is cold it is wet it is raining you know like that like that, that chilly late september rain that falls yep um so yes and it, it's been raining all day you guys are pretty wet and pretty miserable pretty much just ready to like find some find a, an inn or a tavern someplace warm with a fire uh, with some like stew, some ale, not necessarily in that order. I'm gonna rust. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you'll be okay. Yeah. 
the sort of thing like you know you're you know there, there's water in your boots there's you know if, if you put your the hood of your cloak up the the like sudden wet wool just hangs on your head but if you put the hood down it starts to collect water in it it is an altogether unpleasant experience well it's good to be indoors then um, and as you make your way uh, as you make your way along this uh, along this sodden uh, road over the over the din of the of the thunder uh, you hear let's see who's actually got the highest perception I got 11. Ooh, Ruthless has a 13. Yeah, Ruthless has a what? A 13 perception. Yes. Paranoid. Um so uh so Ruthless, you can you can make out what here's like sobbing. And that's without rolling? That's without rolling. Well, I'll try to look out for the source of that sound, then. I bet it's Crunch's mom. What? I said, I bet it's Crunch's mom. But what's Crunch's mom? The, the sobbing sound. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can find where the source of that sound's coming from. Well, if it's a baby, try not to find it. Yeah, I know. We've already got we've already once got too many. <laughs> yep. Uh, give me a um, a perception roll. No bonuses or bane's. Um, you get a bonus because of your guide, but a bane because of the the thunder and the rain. So. All right, success. All right. Um. So yeah, it sounds like it's uh, it's kind of like down off the off the roadway a little bit uh and as you look in like the the flash of lightning you can see what looks like a like an apple orchard all right uh who amongst us does not look scary i'll bring them along with me Swift doesn't look particularly scary. But you're so tall. <laughs> <laughs> no, not among the humans, I'm not. Might I've, as well be a giant. I've had to wrap more than one person in the knees to bring them down to my height. It's really quick, though. Alright, let's go find out who's crying. Who are you taking with you? I guess I'll take you because you oh. you volunteered. Uh, silly me. <laughs> That's uh, what no, you go along. <laughs> should go along with them though. I bet it's troglodytes. It's not troglodytes. I'm pretty certain. Okay, Would they be crying? It's exactly what they want you to think. I want to get under something. Thunder. All right. Uh, usually best not to. Never mind. So ruthless and uh, and Sif are making their way. Yeah, she's pulling her hood up. This is miserable weather. Why are we staying back here again? I don't know. I, I figure we just follow after they get ahead a little bit. That sounds like a good That makes idea. sense. Yeah. We're just trying not to scare anybody right now. Alright. So the uh the two of them make their way down into the uh into the orchard. Um it is it is dark. Like aside from the occasional flash of of lightning, there is like Sif can't see more than like a foot or two in front of her. All 
I should be okay with that, though. Yeah, you can you can see a, a little bit better. I'm just trying to keep Ruthless and within sight, as long as I can see Ruthless's back. Hopefully, won't trip over anything. So you guys make your way down into the uh, into the orchard, and you hear the sobbing. Sif, you can hear it now as well. Um, ruthless to your to your ears, you hear it, and then you hear a a very frightened voice saying, "Is is someone there? Please." Help, help! Help me! Call out. We'll come get you. What's the trouble? Right. So as you uh, make your way deeper into the orchard, this is a trap, isn't it? Uh, you see. Uh, what looks like a uh, a young uh, young human boy, probably probably no more than ten, um, is bound at his elbows and knees uh, to a wooden frame hanging like a scarecrow. As the constable in this area, have I seen something like this before? Uh, no, but you're you guys are not like. You're a constable around Baselzine, which is several several days uh, north of where you are. You guys are much closer. Oh, to the okay. Quarters. Okay. Um, and uh, through the through the the, the rain, um, uh, ruthless. You can make this out with your with your uh, shadow sight. Uh, he has what looks like a a mark on his forehead. Looks like a like a kind of the running down rivulets uh, of water are obscuring it to some extent, but there's a definite mark on his forehead. Any of this iconography mean anything to me? Um, it would not, actually. Okay. And he's just like, please, please help, help me. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to die. How the hell did you get in this situation? He's just basically, you know, when when kids get to that point where they're they're sobbing so hard they can't get actual words out. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, ruthless will pull out her dagger and cut this guy free, and hope he doesn't eat us. <laughs> it's all right, child. My name's Constable Thacker. It's all right. We'll find your family and get back home. All right. And uh, both of you give me a perception check. Uh, Sif at a uh, bane because you can't really see other than the lightning. So under boons or banes, we just put minus one. Yep. Okay. So uh, rolling for me. Agar will leave the uh, lead Bismarck to to catch up. But we're only moving at speed eight, because that's how we roll. That is how we roll. I can't. Oh, there we go. Okay, that might have been because I did a roll too, so it might have been mine that showed up. All right. uh, it says 
Sif Thacker on it, so... Yeah. Might be a second one to show up in a minute, because it didn't seem to work the first time. Maybe. Alright, uh, so as you begin, uh, as you begin uh, freeing this child, uh, Ruth, you, uh, you pick up movement in the trees. Okay. Well, I'll definitely take a look at that. I'll move Do I make a perception thing. check or something like that? Uh, well, you see, you see movement, and as you kind of glance, uh, you can see small figures moving through the moving through the apple trees. Uh, they look like they're probably probably about three or four feet tall. Uh, they look almost like almost like emaciated children. Uh, but then as the, the lightning flash catches, uh, you see, yes, I know they're, I know they're big apples. I didn't have time to resize everything. No, that's fine. I mean, they're perfectly in scale for a dwarf. Yeah, true. Um, so yes, yeah, so, um, they look, these, these figures look like emaciated children. Uh, with like long, uh, long arms and like a, a grayish tint to their skin. Um, Too bad we can't stay. <laughs> That's creepy. Um, and uh, as they as they're moving through, they see you freeing the child. And they say, "He is ours. Leave while you can." I take it I hear this. You do. I'm not seeing anybody though. Um, as you as you look now that like something has drawn your attention to it, uh, you do see these figures moving through the orchard trees gonna kind of peer toward them. He's a child. And they, uh, they, they brandish very wicked looking bronze sickles. Say, leave now. Leave the child. Why? No, no, let me have a point. He belongs to us. Which one of you is his parents? Phyllis is probably close enough to see how tightly <laughs> Thacker uh, Sif is uh, clutching her flail. Right, and they kind of like some of them step out of the tree line. Um, uh, Thagor, you can you can see them with your uh, with your dwarven dark vision. Uh, Bismarck, though, you've got no idea what's going on. No, but can I light a torch? You sure can. I would like to light a torch. There's some creepy little weirdos coming out of the woods. <laughs> I don't think they're Twilightites, but they might be. Sif will pull her flail and just swing it free. I'll keep cutting the kid loose. Okay. Alright, there you go. So uh, you've got a, a torch out in one of your appendages. 
Uh, as as soon as you just bring your weapon out, they basically kind of move out to circle around you. Fagor, <coughs> this bark could use a hand. Okay, uh, I'm ready to go whenever the DM says we can go. Yep, uh, everybody can decide if they would like to do a fast action or a slow action. Or, sorry, a fast turn or a slow turn. Uh, the easiest way I always find to remember this is a fast turn means you're doing one thing. A slow turn means you're doing two things. Okay, I'll take slow. Okay. I'll take slow as well. All right. Uh, so, Sif, you're up first. Uh, Sif is going to uh, do a little warning swing toward these gray things. I take it they're not within range? Uh, one of them is. Oh. Um... Hmm. No, she'll actually take us. Damn it, constable. She won't. It'll just be a warning. Right now, they haven't actually attacked us. Uh, you, you can take the defend action, which means anything that attacks you will have a, a bane. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Bismarck, Ruthless, and Thagor, you guys are up. Sweet. Uh, is this little water any 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 enough to to uh, hinder me at all? Uh, no, it's only a, it's only like a couple of feet wide. It's like a little stream that runs through the orchard. All right. In that case, uh, Thagor will uh, run forward, shouting uh, his dwarven battle cry uh, at the at the the one last one in the line there. Okay. Uh, probably something to do with damn dirty troglodytes. <laughs> Seems on brand. Yep. Starting to see a theme here. <laughs> uh, so I've got one boon for warrior stuff. Yeah, it should uh, that'll automatically roll in. Oh, it'll automatically roll in. Okay. Hi. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Ooh, that, Ooh. Is, that is a solid, solid hit. Four damages. All right. So yeah. So you bring your axe around and you uh, you cut this thing uh, fairly deeply. Uh, what is vaguely disturbing? It does not bleed blood. It kind of puffs out like some some dirt and uh, and some twigs and stuff. Oh, these things aren't made of people. Are they made of apples? Uh, quite possibly in, in dust and dirt and stuff. Well, that seems familiar. It does sound very familiar to Ruth. Is this a druid thing? Can you do anything with that? Uh, they're... They're changelings. Oh. Alright. Um, so, what we'll do, uh... I will, I will very quickly catch, uh, catch Tegan up on, uh, on the situation as, as it stands now, while, uh, Bismarck and Ruthless and Jinx debate what they would like to do. Sounds good. All right. So as a quick recap, uh, there was basically it's been it's been several months since the incident at the at the inn with the undead. Everybody is 
made the way to Bazazan, uh, done some training with various uh, tradesmen and guilds and, uh, and similar. Uh, you guys have managed to make a decent enough living as adventurers for hire. Uh, to the point where you have like a little townhouse in Bazazan, so you don't have to worry about uh, staying in taverns. Uh, you found a family, uh, Emily and uh, Piedor, who you trust to watch the child when you have to be away. Um, there was some other character stuff that they will fill you in on later, I'm sure. But uh, the party has been traveling for a while on various errands for their for their instructors and you know making some coin as adventures in the southern parts of Belgrandia. Um, it is late mid-September uh, coming up on the uh, autumn equinox. Uh, as you can tell from the weather it is shitastic outside. Uh, it's been raining for the better part of a day. Lightning, thunder, Everybody is drenched to the bone, just eager to get someplace with like a fire and warm food and a warm bed. So that my past week, right. <laughs> there you go. Um, and as they were passing through this apple orchard, um, they heard the sound of sobbing. Um, Ruth and, uh, and a new warrior friend of Thagar's named Sif went down to investigate. Uh, found a young human child, no more than 10, uh, tied up to like a wooden frame in the orchard, uh, sobbing and asking to, for help and saying as how he didn't want to die. And as they started to release him, these kind of like long-limbed but short, gray-skinned, uh, now that they're up close to some of you, faceless, uh, creatures wielding bronze sickles have come out of the orchard and saying, leave him alone, he belongs to us. Go now and you won't die, sort of thing. So, Bismarck, Ruthless, and Jinx, you guys are up. Yeah, I just want to free the kid. I don't necessarily want to fight changelings. Okay, uh, yeah, you can, uh, as a slow action, you can easily, with your knife, kind of, like, cut the bonds uh, and free the, uh, free the child. <clears throat> and he, he just kind of clutches to you. Make sure oh, it's boy. got parents. We're not taking another one that doesn't have parents. Oh, at least Bloody humans. What if the this parents are the ones that put him out here? <laughs> this one can change the diapers of the other one. Ooh. Mm, I see your idea now. I think that's terrible. That's, that's a ticket there. Either way, these things are awful chatty for something without faces. So Bismarck will move up? And cast arcane armor on himself. Okay. Perfect. Right. Um, what would Jinx like to do? All right. So we're kind of facing off this group. Uh, if it's possible to kind of get to sort of like I guess a the equivalent of a flanking position, slightly to the side. Um, so I'm definitely not a frontline fighter, but. Um, just stay behind Thagor. It'll be fine. It's like to, the, to the slight side, so you know the agility be able to actually move, or reach around you. Because I don't have that arm range <laughs> length. Um, uh, effectively holding, a hold it defensively, holding action. Okay, uh, and you could probably get into like these trees over here. Okay. To provide you some degree of cover. Okay. Alrighty. So the uh, the one changeling is going to uh, it's going to move around. It's going to take a, a swing at uh, at Sif, trying to get through Sif to get to Ruth. 
Okay. There it a bane because of my defense. That would have only been a 14. And that's versus my what? Versus your defense. <clears throat> Should be 50. Where do I see my defense? Uh, on your uh, on your main sheet. On the left. Uh, also, if you look at the combat tracker, uh, it tracks, oh, mm -hmm. yes. com combat tracker also tracks everybody's defense. Okay. That one is going to move up uh, towards Thagar. Ooh, a mighty six. No, thank you. This is going to be like Conan, where you guys survive because I can't roll dice. <laughs> uh, that one is going to also attack. Thank you. So that is going to do seven damage as it basically it kind of gets around your shield and cuts deep through your deep through your uh, your brigadine with this uh, this bronze scimitar that it has. This one. Uh, is going to move up and try to attack the uh, the clockwork. Yeah. Twenty three is a hit. Ooh, for nine damage. Good God! Yikes! That will bring us to the next turn. Everybody can decide if they would like to be fast or slow. Uh, if you're doing a slow action, can you defend and attack? Uh, no, you can you can move and do an action. Okay. Is there a tax of opportunity in this? Uh, there is. Uh, is. Does that apply to magic as well? Uh, no. If you if you try to move away from a creature, it can use what's called a triggered action to attack you. Okay. All right. Everybody has their actions locked in. Uh, Bismarck, Ruthless, and Thagor, you guys are all on fast actions. Uh, Blind's real easy. Um, Unerring Darts does up to seven, I think. Uh, yeah, it's, it's seven darts, one damage per dart, you can target up to three. And the guy in front of me is unwounded? The guy in front of you, uh, Thagor, already took a chunk out of. Is he, like, dying, dying, or just beat up a bit? He's, he's, uh... It's made of dirt. Yeah, he's yeah. spilling a fair amount of, uh, of dirt and stuff. In D&D terminology, he would be bloodied. Okay, so I'll give him four, and then the guy next to, uh, Thagar, Thagan... I will give the other three. So four, the one in front of me, and the three to the next. Uh, 
thinks he's so fancy with his magical missiles. Alright. So yeah, that one that one that was coming towards you, the, the one that just basically put a pretty big dent in you, the missiles just strike into it and just kinda of blow it apart and it just falls apart into like branches and leaves and dirt. Sheesh. Uh, Ruthless and Thagor. Right, I can use a tr an action or a triggered action on my turn to heal damage equal to my healing rate. Catch my breath. Yep. Uh, if I use a triggered action, do I still have an action? You do. Um, it's a good chance to kind of do a little bit of a breakdown. A triggered action is a when this happens, you can do this. You only get one triggered action per round. Um, but sometimes the trigger is on your turn, or when an opponent moves away from you, or things of that nature. Oh, okay. So, in in the case of uh, of the, uh, the 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 second wind or whatever it's called, catch, catch, hmm. catch my breath. The trigger is you have to do it on your turn. Oh, okay. Uh, but other than that, it is a triggered action and not an action. All right. Well, I'll take a swing at this guy next to me that just got uh, magic missile. Okay. That is it. Five damage. So yeah, so you swing around with your axe and you kind of catch it, catch him in the side. He's looking, he's looking pretty badly beat up. He's, uh, you cut through the arm and you can tell that the arm is little more than um, tree branches and leaves kind of loosely put together in a humanoid form. And it's, you definitely broke some of the, some of the tree limbs that are making up that arm. All right. And then I'll trigger, catch your breath. Uh, this one over here by Sif is going to try to attack. Sif's defense is still in action. Oh, cool. Uh, definitely not with a three. <laughs> definitely not with a three. Definitely not. <laughs> definitely. When it comes to my turn, I'll take a shot at that one by Sif. Okay. Alright, uh, the one that Thago just hit is going to hit him back. Alright. So, yeah, so it, it takes a swing, but it's, uh, it, its arm is definitely badly wounded. It's very easy to judge where its blow is. You just kind of, like, deflect it off your shield. Should have eaten his apples. Uh, oh, I apparently I forgot that Ruthless was doing a fast action, so. Yeah, well, I'll just take a shot uh, with my staff, I guess. Okay. One of those fancy shooting stabs, eh? Well, I'm right next to somebody, so I'll hit them. Yeah, that is a hit. All right. Right, so you bring your staff around and you kind of crack it across the leg and it, its knee kind of pops at a weird angle uh, but still seems to be fully functional because of their weird anatomy. Damn. I know all about it. Uh, that will bring us to uh, Sif and Jinx. Uh, Sif? Having seen that a blow to the knee did nothing, which kind of irritates her, because that's her usual go-to for bringing people down to her size, um, she'll swing for the head instead. Okay. And hope for the best. It's 
Sounds like a good general rule. Swing for the head instead. <laughs> Um, to get something equipped, because I've got armor and a large shield, the little, um, the little clothing icon needs to be on or off, like uh, black or gray. It needs to be dark, so everything that you have okay. is equipped. Good, good. Did that roll? It didn't roll. Why am I not rolling? Are you clicking the, the picture or are you clicking the where it says flail? Well, when I click where it says flail, it says attack roll, flail. Add wounds or banes, add modifier. I click roll and nothing happens. Hmm. That's really weird. Because it rolls for me. I mean, it rolls shitty for Oh, me. there it goes. Apparently it just really, really likes to think about what I'm going to roll. <laughs> no, that was... That was me again. I don't know why it's not rolling. Oh, I don't either. Uh, try hitting F5 to uh, to reset Foundry. See what that does. Uh, it didn't reset Foundry. It did something else entirely. And now I can't get whatever this is off my screen. All right. Well, we'll finish out Jinx's turn, and then I'll come over and take a look at your laptop, and we'll see. Okay. Uh, Jinx, what would you like to do? Okay, so um, we're hitting things. Obviously, not bleeding creatures, but if we we thwack them, they seem to take damage. Um, so I'm also way more at range than I realized. So I'm thinking because I now have bow and arrow. Probably that's my best bet. Yep. Um, or if I should move a little bit, I this is slow, so I can move forward a little bit. Uh. I'm gonna I'm gonna move a little bit just so I'm less likely to shoot my friends. <laughs> uh, uh, better line of sight and take a shot at this. I guess the southernmost uh, mook. Okay. Um, so as a as a rogue, you have an ability called trickery. I don't know if you've had a chance to look, but what? It yes. Uh, once per round, may make an attack or challenge roll with one boot. If you attack with one boon from this talent, deal plus 1d6 damage. That's an every round thing? That's an every round thing. That's absurd, and I love it. <laughs> um, but uh, it is once per round, because at a certain level of rogue, if you roll well enough, you get to take a second turn during the round. Right. No, that makes sense. But at this level, once per round is holy crap. So, all right. adding it's, a all, it's all the time, yeah. Uh, so yes, that is most definitely a hit. And it says, so it's the damage is actually going to be 2d6. So do the damage roll and then just do a public roll. Yeah, or uh, if you hit the damage twice, it should roll it twice for you. Either way. All right. Looks like I did six. That'll show him. He's kind of beat up, so that might do it. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So out of out of nowhere, this arrow just basically finds this thing. Even though it doesn't, even though it's not technically living, it still breathes, and you catch it kind of through the through the throat, and it's just like this explosion of like twigs and leaves at the back of its neck, and it slumps to the ground. I'm going to be AFK for a second as I go take a look at Anita's laptop. Yeah, I'll just be a sec too. Be right back. It's okay. We'll just be over here getting work done. Well, there are three of us. I mean, we'll meet them in the middle eventually, but uh, yes, that's I don't know if they're pulling their weight over there. Why is it okay? Yeah, I don't think they are, are they? 
We've already killed two. Three. Was it three? Uh, it was two that you dropped because there were five. Right. This one is going to uh, to step forward and take a take a swipe at Thagor. So yeah, so that one comes kind of comes up behind you, but as it swings, it kind of catches on your brigantine and it deflects that blow, and then you turn around. And you're like, oh. I've got their measure now. First hit was a lucky one. And this other one is going to step into where Sif is with her uh, with her flail. Uh, that is only going to be an eleven. So again, the the uh, the investment in the brigantine armor that your uh, trainers have given you seems to seems to really be worth it. Uh, and you guys notice those of you that have been hit by these things, they may look kind of lanky, but they are they they definitely know how to wield those blades efficiently. Uh, next round, everybody can decide if they would like to do fast or slow. If I do slow, does that mean I can use my crossbow and reload it? Uh, yeah, you could fire off your crossbow and reload it as a slow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, you can't attack twice yet. That's a much higher level. Okay. Actually, before I, before I tell you that, let me double check reload. I mean, not going to lie, part of me hopes that I make a really wrong rules call and then somebody who watches this calls me out on it because it means somebody was watching. Right. Fair. Thagor, let me go first before you. All right, sure. All right, uh, reload is actually an action. So basically, you could fire this turn and then reload next turn and then fire again. All right, so yeah, I'll switch the crossbow then. Okay. And I'll stay slow. Okay. All right. Everybody has their actions? I do not. Alright, uh, Bismarck and Thegor. Alright, Bismarck's gonna go first. I'm going to uh, speak some magic words and do my little incantation and summon a wrench in my hand and chuck it at this fool in front of Thegor. Good old magic wrench. Alrighty. Uh, so yeah, so that is definitely a hit. Alright, how do I do damage on this? Uh, if you just click the little thing where it says target is not prone damage. There you go. Alright. So yeah, so Thagor, out of uh, out of nowhere from behind you as you turn around to face this uh, this thing, there's there's like this sound, and uh, something solid hits that thing and just drops it to the ground. Who throws a wrench, really? Well, I did knock it down. I'm just stare at it. All right. Uh, do I get a boon for it being prone? You do. Fancy. Teamwork. Oh, it's too many boons. 
So yeah, you uh, you bring your you bring your shield uh, around and you bring the axe down and it just kind of moves just enough to the side for you to bury the axe like three or four inches into the into the soil. Uh, this uh, this changeling up here that is facing Sif. It is going to try to hit her once again. No. Uh, well, I imagine I imagine that Sith is probably trying to interpose herself and her shield between uh, the thing and Ruthless and the child. So. Yeah, I was wondering what the child was up to. It is, it is just clinging to you. Yeah. Uh, no. it's Fifteen. Alrighty, uh, that will bring us to uh, Ruthless and Sif and Jinx. Uh, Sif is going to take a swing at the one that just tried to smack her. You know, returning the favor and all. <clears throat> so you take a, a swing at it, but it just basically with that kind of like weird janky almost stuttering movement it just kind of lurches out of the way creepy freaky things they're probably the good guys the kid's probably the villain <laughs> <laughs> now we gotta kill them all just to be sure well I'll, I'll take a shot with my crossbow then uh, the one uh, by Sif That is definitely a hit. I'm glad one of us can hit it. I'm not doing much damage though. Right. So yeah, so the crossbow bolt like goes through it and out the other side and it like lurches back. It is it is definitely very, very hurt. I uh, jinx is up. Um, I'm going to again move to get slightly better position and I'm going to what's the currently the southmost monster. Okay. Oof. Oof. Holy cow. That is most assuredly a hit. Yeah, um, <laughs> too bad these aren't zombies, right? <laughs> <laughs> or troglodytes. Of course. Uh, looks like I did eight damage. All right, so uh, again, from, be from behind you, um, uh, Thagor, you can, you can vaguely hear the, the pitter-patter of little feet because... Uh, Jinx isn't really trying to stealth at this point in time. And then an arrow like sinks into the into like the you want to say eye socket, but they don't really have them. So you're just going to say general face area uh, as, the face arrow, hole. as the arrow just yeah. kind of sinks very deeply, deeply into that thing as it's laying there on the ground. Um, it will it will struggle to get to its feet for sure. Rip him a new face hole. Um, and it will, it will like, kind of stumbly lurch uh, to its uh, to its feet. Jinx, don't let any of these giant apples fall on you. Um, but yes, it is. Uh, it will, it will basically get to its feet, and I assume when I like got dropped prone, because I mean, it didn't deliberately fall prone. It got knocked to its feet uh, off its feet by a wrench, so. It's basically going to get to its feet and then like grab up its bronze scimitar out of the out of the the muck and stuff. But that is its entire slow turn. As long as it didn't grab the wrench. Uh, the wrench actually disappears after it hits. Now it's a magic wrench. I believe it. I'm sorry. No, normal wrenches disappear as soon as you put them down. Too. That is true. Mm. No, Very no, no, true. No, no, I, don't think I, uh, I don't think that's true. Certainly, ten millimeter does. 
Oh, that is going to be a it's super solid hit to uh, to Sif. Ow! Oof. You're getting good at making characters in this game. Good thing, right? Good lord. 12 damage on a scimitar? Better grab those up when we're done. Um, so yeah, so it, it just basically slashes like right across your abdomen and you can feel it's it's the first time you've been warm all day uh, as the as the blood starts to <laughs> s- as the, the blood starts to seep out. And that's not the ideal way of keeping warm, but <laughs> yeah, she cries out in pain and clutches her stomach. <laughs> it's okay, everybody pees in their armor sometime. Uh, and everybody can decide whether they would like to be fast or slow. I will stick to slow so I can reload and shoot again. Gotta go fast. Yeah, fast. I'm staying slow because the ability to reposition and shoot is useful. Alright, so uh, Bismarck, Sif, and Thagor, you guys are up. Uh, mine's pretty easy, so I'll just try to fire off a magic dart to this guy that we've been pummeling. Okay. Yeah, automatically hits. Two damage. All right, so the dart slams into it, and it it rocks back. You, it is like it it falls down onto one knee and like kind of struggles to regain its balance, um, but it is it is still uh, it is still operational. Tough bugger. All right. Hey, there we go. That is a hit. Ooh, big money. All right, so yeah, so Thagor, as this thing is, like, getting up off its knees from where it got dropped prone by the by the magic dart, it kind of, like, staggers up to its feet, and you bring the axe down uh, and basically kind of, like, um, uh, bifurcate it, you know, like, head, head to groin, and it kind of, like, splits open, you know, leaves and twigs and everything everywhere. Hey, I broke the pinata. Candy for everybody. Right. Uh, Sif, you are up. <laughs> Sif would like to fall back. Um, with a movement of ten. Said. Don't forget, you got your uh, you got your uh, second wind. You can use speed of ten. Yes, that's my hope. Because I can only do one of those two things, right? Either move or second wind. No, on your on your turn, you can catch your breath uh, for free. It just means that you can't do any attacks or opportunity or anything else that takes a triggered action. Oh, okay then. Um, and uh, if you if you move away from them, they can use a triggered action to swing at you. Okay, so but I can do the healing. And swing at them at the same round. Yes, you can, you can actually. I would like to do that. You can actually uh, heal, swing, and move. Well, that's good to know. Now um, you're thinking with portals. Yeah, uh, I will be happy with uh, healing and swinging. Do I just click where it says healing rate? Um, yeah, it's not it's not automated, so just uh, remove whatever your healing rate is as damage. If you go under your talent, you mine, can... Mine did it on its own. Oh, sweet. I didn't know it was coded. <laughs> yeah, if you, if, you, if you go under your talent, you can use it. I just clicked it on the under her icon. Oh, sure. Nice. Um, I will take that heel, just kind of stuff my parts back in, tighten my belt around the wound, uh... And uh, swing at that <clears throat> that has hit me because I don't appreciate it. 
Do I have a bane because I'm injured? Uh, yes. Okay. Let's see if this will work. I don't know what their defense is, but I rolled an eleven. Right. Um, so yeah, so you uh, you bring your you bring your weapon around, but the kind of gritting your teeth through the pain, it's enough to just throw your aim off ever so much. You're you're worried about overextending and opening that wound up again. Yep. So you just kind of pull a little bit uh, a little bit shy. Okay. Okay. Uh, that guy is he is. He is making a run for it. Uh, slow actions, uh, ruthless in chinks. All right. You said one. Wait, did one? One of them is running away. Where's? Yeah, no, I went up there. Him. Yeah, that goes like that way. You can't quite see him though. Okay. Uh, someone click the map again, which that way is. Sorry. Oh, way up there. Um, hmm. How far can I get on a move? Uh, what's your speed? My speed is 10, unless that changes my agility going up. Uh, no. So you can, you can get to, like, the north side of the orchard. You can get up to, like, here. Uh, I will I will move uh, towards towards the the target. Um, so it's... Right. Sorry, I am failing at grid mechanics. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Uh, and once you have it measured out, if you hit space, it'll just move you along that line. Okay. Uh, sure. There we go. Hooray! There we go. So yeah, as, uh, you, as you dash through the the orchard, um, before long you kind of get to the point where your shadow sight allows your eyes to adjust, and you can you can see this thing fleeing away. Mm-hmm. Um, was that my whole action, or I still get to take a shot? Uh, no, that was only your move. So you still get. All to right, a, I will take a shot. Um. <laughs> wow. Good glory. She ain't playing. <laughs> nope, not even a little. There's no runners here. So that's seven. So yeah, so the arrow lands and like sinks in the back of its leg, and it reaches down and kind of like snaps it off, and it is con going to continue to move. I, out of curiosity, because um, it's I'm rolling really high. Is there the equivalent of a crit mechanic in this game? Um, not exactly, but there are there are certain things that if you roll more than twenty and five or higher, more than what you needed, you'll get to do an extra thing. Okay, no, that's cool to know. Uh, I figured you'd tell me, but it was just also my curiosity when I rolled a 19 and a 6. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you. You can, you can sometimes get something like that with uh, a higher level or a higher tier class. Right, yeah. and like with the zombies, if you rolled above a 20, it was a one shot. So Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, with, a, with a rogue, actually, at second level of rogue, if you roll higher than 20 and 5 or more than what you needed, you get to take another, uh, another turn before the end of the round. Wow, yeah. that's pretty sweet. Yeah, it, uh, and it's a it's a full other turn, not just like another action. So you get your move, you get your attack, you get your triggered action. Uh, not your triggered action, but you get your move and your action a second time if you roll well enough in the first. Well, thank you for that. 
All right, uh, Ruthless, you are up. Uh, looks looks about six yards away from me. Uh, is that close enough for me to take a shot? Absolutely. Nope. No, not with the two. Uh, Thagor. Oh, I know. I, I changed mine for next turn already. Sorry. Oh, okay. Perfect. All right. Uh, so in that case, it is the changeling. Uh, and this one is going to start to bugger off into the trees. Um, it seems fairly evident to, uh, to you guys that these things, I mean, they've lost, uh, like three fifths of their numbers and one of them is gravely wounded. Um, it's pretty obvious to, uh, to Sif and Thagor that they are, uh, they are basically in the runaway, runaway mode. Cowards! I empathize. Are we pulling out of combat then? Uh, well, uh, everybody has chosen whether they are fast or slow, so uh, Sif, I think, is the only one on fast. What would you like to do? Um, no one is nearby anymore. Uh, no. So no. I will move. Um, how far can I go? Uh, probably ten yards. Okay. Keep it with your long legs so fast. <laughs> I don't know how I measure distance in this. Um, if you hold down uh, control and just drag from your person, it'll measure it up for you. Or you can switch to the little ruler dealy bob on the, on the left side. Yeah, I tried doing that and nothing happened. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I can't move my person because it's decided that my uh, little ruler will always be on now. Uh, up at the top where there's like little meeple picture and there's little square brackets, click the square brackets. Thank you. So she's going to run over here. Not seeing anybody, she will clutch her injury. Uh, the, uh, the two enemy combatants are also taking fast actions and they are just running. Uh, slow actions, which would be everybody else. I'm going to transform into my starling look. Uh, starling forms and just follow them along to see where they're going okay well the uh the the starling it's basically it's a it's a one turn like i move from here to there done oh okay uh, then i won't do that i'll just stay put and make sure that kid is all right yeah it's basically like a like a really kind of flashy teleport <clears throat> that works where'd they go I'll move up next to Sif and cast Minor Healing. Okay. Damn it. Creepy little things rang off. Um, so yeah, so uh, Thagor, as uh, as you move forward, you can you can hear them running in the distance, but they are they are definitely just booking it. You better run, you cowardly bastards! Uh, so, Bismarck moves up to do minor healing, so Anita, that will heal half your healing rate. Uh, round down. Okay. Uh, Jinx, what would you like to do? 
Um, since it sounds like everyone's like not, I, I it sounds like uh, combat's dropping off. Um, I will call out like, are we pursuing? Um, and if no one says yes, which giving the assumption no one is, I'm going to. Um, the guy just ripped, broke off the arrow. He didn't rip, pull it out, right? Yeah, he just basically just snapped it off and. Okay, um, then I'm going to head back towards the group. Um, if uh, I will help with, you know, helping bandage wounds if, as need be. Um, and after that, I'd like to try to see if I can reclaim any of the, the two arrows I shot. Uh, you can reclaim one. Okay. So, yeah, um, I'll definitely help with any bandaging or med medicine that is not magical as needed. Tip will gladly take any kind of healing. I could rub some dirt on it for you. No, no, I think I've got enough there as it is. Alright, yeah, try and walk it off a little bit. Your doctors must be so strange. Here, let me throw some dirt on it. Walk around a while. Oh, you'll feel a lot better. Yep. Okay. The uh, the the little boy that you've uh, that you've rescued, he's kind of like he is still like clinging to to ruthless. Like when she went over to see where they're going, he basically like tagged along. Like his hand does not leave her um, her like cloak. Don't get too attached, Ruth. We're not keeping that one. Uh, trust me, I'm not. Uh, are, are they gone? I think oh, they ran right off like cowards. Thank, thank you. So what's all this about? The... The... Men in... The... With the... With the hoods. They... They took me and brought me here. The men with the hoods. You said the, the kid had some kind of symbol on him? Um... He does like yeah. it, it's a. A lot of it is washed away because of the rain, uh, but it looks like you can kind of faintly make out. It looks like a like a downward pointing uh, arrow on his forehead. It looks like it was probably drawn in with uh, with charcoal or something. So it's largely a smudge, but you can very faintly make out uh, like the downward arrow. Downward arrow. Does that mean anything to anybody? Does it match the symbol of the cult? Uh, it does not mark uh, match the symbol of the uh, mother's children, no. Anything with the old gods? I knew. Doesn't look familiar. Um... Ruth can make a intellect roll with one bane. Nope. Is the kid hurt? Uh, he does. He doesn't look to be physically injured, as uh, as uh, as Bismarck and and Jinx kind of look him over. He doesn't seem to be physically injured at all. I mean, he was obviously he was tied. Uh, he was tied quite tightly. Um, so there's like some uh, some rope marks, but no physical injuries at all. Did they say why they were doing this to you? They just, they took me, they took, I want to go, I want to see my mom. 
Oh, did you hear that? He's him. got parents. <laughs> it means he has a house. Do you know where your home is? Um, uh, Avilton. And he kind of, he, he points to the road you guys came down off of into the orchard. Do I know where this town is? Uh, everybody can make an intellect. Um, I would say Thagor and Ruth and Sif have a boon because you guys have wilderness professions. Do I have a bane because I'm still injured? Mm. Uh, uh, no, you don't. Okay. Success. Same. I got a, I got a success on Jinx. All right. Oh. Um, so all of you, all of you have heard of Avilton. Avilton is a uh, a small little village, no more than no more than like a dozen families, um, that is renowned for their for their apples. Uh oh. Uh, apple apples apple cider apple butter apple pie. Uh, they they are they are known from the the folks that kind of travel through the through the wilds and and journey this far south, um, and they they even like sell their apples uh, in the more northern parts. Um, they are they are very uh, it's like uh, uh, it's like the Annapolis Valley sort of thing. It is it is known for its apples. Um, Makes sense. Look at them; they're gigantic. <laughs> Now, Don's going to make me, like, meticulously resize like, everything <laughs> on every map I make. Chop, I don't chop, know. Have you ever heard week. of Westfield Seek No Further? <laughs> about accurate. Yeah. I'm glad somebody's on my side. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Um, so, like, given the fact that uh, Avilton is known for their apples and you're in an apple orchard, stands the reason the village is probably not terribly far. All right, well, let's see if we can get you back to your family. Yes, please. Yeah. And the, the whole time he has not let go of uh, Ruth's cloak. Do the apples look ripe? Uh, yes, they do. Did your... Might as well have a couple for the road. Did your parents say anything when the preachers showed up? I, I, I don't think mom knows. I was in bed. They come in through the window or the door? Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the window. Well, these dirt critters uh, that we just fought, Chris, they weren't wearing hoods or sacks on their heads or anything. Um, no, they were not. They do have uh, they do have uh, bronze sickles, mm. um, and they they very definitely, uh, especially uh, Ruth. You you can I, you can tell right away that these are changelings. Right. Um, but yeah, other than that, they have just got like um, just like raggedy clothes and. I don't think it was them that took the child. I think people did that. Sort of quietly to whatever adult person is near me. Not uh, trying not to say this to the kid is. Do, is the kid just going to get disappeared again? Let's hope not. We're not keeping it. We're not. We're not keeping it. Not another one. I'm not saying that, but uh, I'm a little cautious about our reception in the town. Well, let's go check it out. Here, kid, have an apple. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. That's a free lesson right there. Always take time to eat when you can. <laughs> well, I mean, 
if you have to do such things. He's a yeah, like people a do. Human boy, he probably does have to eat. Yeah. Let's go check out this town. See if it's safe to drop this little fella back at his own. Might be a reward. Excellent idea. Um, so yeah, so you guys uh, make your way back up to the up to the road. We're, we're taking those sites too, by the way. Yeah. Um, so yes, uh, I don't know if people. I don't know if you can add your own weapons onto your character shooting up, but they do a d6 damage. Okay. Nice. How many were there? Uh, there were three because two of them got away. Okay. So three of you take them. I've got a flail. Oh, uh, my axe is better than any scythe. Keep it for keep it for the cell when we get to town. Oh no, it's Crunch! Tell me, Crunch. Back from the dead. Not again! Not again! But just think, now you could just hand over the baby to him. Right. You know, can you guys see the map? or? Yes. Yes, it's raining very yep. hard, and uh, Crunch is in the middle of it. Poor zombie Crunch. Poor zombie Crunch. At least the troglodytes didn't get him. It ain't over yet. Alright, so by the time you get to Avalton, it is, like, the skies have opened up. It's been, it's been raining all day, uh, but now, like, the, the storm itself seems to have abated, the thunder and the lightning, uh, but the rain is just, like, unending. Does it take us more than four hours to get here? Uh, no, it takes you about 20 minutes. All oh, this rain just sluices off my arcane armor. It's lovely. Yeah, there's like this little bubble around Bismarck. Um, so the How much does he weigh? Can you make that bigger? <laughs> uh, not really. Can I, can I, can I wear him like a hat? No. That's really up to Bismarck. I mean, he's only three feet tall, so I'll sit on your shoulders for sure. All right, sounds good. All right, uh, so Appleton itself, it's a, it's a small collection of homes uh, alongside a river. Um, as you, as you kind of like come across the, this little village, um, can kind of see it, it it's a fairly open area there are some trees and stuff around uh in the center of town you see a, a large um a large building um uh down to uh down to the south uh, uh th there are some lights on what is obviously a, a inn or a tavern or a public house of some nature um everything here is they there there are paths but they're like muddy cobblestone, uh, the sort of thing that your feet kind of like shuck, shuck out of the, as you walk around. Uh, but what uh, kind of draws your attention is if this if this child, if this missing child, is from this village, nobody's out looking for him. the The houses are the houses are closed. the The windows are shuttered. You can see like the faint creeping of light from around the shutters, indicating that there's people home, but there's nobody out in the in the village itself. What's the kid's name? Yeah, that's what I was just gonna ask. Uh, Pal. So, Pal, which house is yours? So the, the over over by the inn. There's a name right. here. That's good. Let's head that way. Um, is it possible that James could try to be 
a little unobtrusive in all of this, just trying to keep trying to keep an eye on what's what's going on because th- this does not seem like a very warm and inviting situation we're going into. Um, yeah, between uh, between the, the the fact that it's getting onto nightfall and uh, and the heavy rain, it's pretty easy for uh, for a goblin to make themselves uh, unobtrusive. Uh, and you make your way make your way up to the house, and the the house is the the house is closed up. The, there's no lights on. There's no light cre- creeping around the the shutters like there are in some of the other places. Uh, the the door itself seems to be locked or latched in some fashion. Do your parents work somewhere else, <clears throat> at the inn or somewhere? Um, no, it's just uh, just just my mom. I don't I don't have a dad. Oh, what's her name? I uh, uh, I've heard people call her Jenny. Wonderful, thank you. Knock on the door. No answer. Is it locked? Can we just put him in the his bedroom window? Or? Well, we should make sure it's safe first. I'm starting to think the changelings were the good guys. Yeah, as uh, as Jinx is kind of making her way out of Trisil around, you can see the which probably the bedroom window they took him out of. There's a, there is a window that is open even with all this rain coming down. Uh, and inside it does look like a child's room. Um. Thagor? Did you see yeah. your torch out? Shine your torch in through this window. I've got a torch. Uh... I'll take a look in the window. Okay. So you're kind of up on your tippy toes to, to peek in. And uh, yeah, it looks like a looks like a child's bedroom. Uh, what are you looking for in particular? Is there anything in the bed? Uh, no, there's not. Okay. I pull myself up into the room. <laughs> okay. uh, I hope you're uh, uh, give me a Give me an agility check. Does he get a boon if I'm helping him? No, really, I'm just... Uh, he's going to make it okay. in. It's just a question of how... Uh... <laughs> how messy it is? <laughs> it's a 15! Oh, like a, like a, like a trained dwarven <laughs> warrior. He just, he just kind of like uh, ups and vaults into the, into the room. Lands on his feet. Yeah, uh, Ready for danger. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, definitely looks like a like a child's bedroom. The the bed is a little on the smaller side. There's uh there's a couple of like carved wooden toys. Right, it's safe in here, and a good sight drier than out there. Come on in, and I'll uh, Thagor will uh, hold his hand out to help the uh, next person in the room. Okay. Push Paul forward. He'll uh, he'll need some help, but he can get in. Yeah. And once everybody's in, uh, Thagor is going to see about starting a fire. I think we should check the inn. Yeah, see me if too. Jenny's there. Um, we'll go out into the rest of the house. Or at least sifful. Um, yeah. Any blood, sign of a struggle? Um, give me a perception check. Um, sure. Uh, I will say uh, with a with a boon, since you're a trained guide, you know how to you know how to look for things. And a constable. And a constable. Have two. <laughs> is uh, it just one? Uh, no, it, it is. It would actually be two. Oh, cool. I didn't actually expect that to be the case. You joke, but it's true. You I get joke, two. But it is. And in this one, you take the best of the two rolls, right? Exactly. Right. Okay. 
right. Um, so yeah, so uh, Seth, you spent some time on, on crime scenes and the like, and uh, you know how to look for tracks and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. At first, you're like, it doesn't. Everything appears to be everything appears to be in order. Uh, but then you notice uh, like the kind of like the place settings. Uh, you can see where there's. Like a little bit of like a little bit of a ring, like perhaps Jenny isn't the best housekeeper, and the place settings have have been moved or aren't in the position they were before. Like you can see that little telltale kind of dust ring that kind of catches your eye. So there's no, it's not that there's no signs of a struggle. There's signs that perhaps a struggle was cleaned up. Okay. Um. But the dust itself is there. Yes. Like, like, per, okay. taking a look around the rest of the place, your astute uh, constable mind indicates that Jenny is perhaps not a, not a uh, good housekeeper. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I imagine that Pell keeps her busy. Um, it's like, where's, where's my mom? Not sure yet, Pell. Is this her bedroom? Uh huh. All right. Could you go tell Ruth that I'm going to look in here? Okay. Thank you. And once he's turned around, she'll open the bedroom door. Okay. Um, it is it's empty. Uh, unmade bed, you know, some laundry that she'll get to at some point, but. But it doesn't look like someone's gone through and robbed it? Uh, no, it does not look like it's been tossed. Okay. Is it dusty in here, too? The, the same level of general unkemptness. Okay. But not like this place hasn't been entered. No one has come into this room for the past year. No. Okay. Um, and since Thagor was looking at starting a fire, there is still a little bit of residual heat from the, from the coals in the fireplace. Excellent. That should make it easy. So, like, they're they're not glowing red or anything, but they're uh, definitely, especially considering the you know the the temperatures outside and the rain and everything. the The fire's probably only been out for like five or six hours. Uh, Thagor is gonna split some split some wood and rekindle the fire. Yeah, it'd be a good time to take a bit of a breather, right? Dry off before we. Go back out in the weather? Yeah, if his mother's still around, she'll come back. It's what you do with a house. I think we should, I still think we should check the inn. Something doesn't feel right here. Yeah, I agree. I don't like kids, but I don't like the idea of leaving a kid alone with nobody around. Um, He's old enough, he'd be fine. So since uh, since uh, Bismarck brought it up, uh, just so folks are aware, unlike in D and D, this game does not have short rests. Okay. So a rest is a period of inactivity lasting about eight hours. Ooh. And how much do we heal during that time? Since Sif is still walking wounded. Uh, during that eight hour, you heal damage equal to your healing rate. Well, now but you can also place... use your catch your breath again. So, yep. How often can you use that? Uh, once per rest. Okay. Um, now that we're in a place where there's some water and some light, um, Sif will kind of clean up and bandage a wound, 
so at least it doesn't get worse. Uh, I I can help if you'd like. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, I don't think it's my healing kind of kit, an... kit upgraded with with my with my my leveling, so it's only going to be one hit point. But you you get you get one point back. One hit point is better than no hit points. That is true. I and it's, you know, take one. <laughs> well bandaged helps with the areas that you can't reach, which is Excellent. sometimes an issue. Yeah, a little bit. Thank you. So yeah, that's a it's a pretty nasty cut uh, across your abdomen, but uh, Chinks manages to get it uh, bandaged, so it's feeling a little bit better. Yes, it doesn't feel like <laughs> I'll sneeze and have my insides become outsides. And as you guys are, uh, as Sip is getting bandaged up, and you guys are debating what to do. Um, there comes a knock at the door. Oh, excellent. I told you they, were, they would come home eventually. Interesting. I will open the door. Okay. Uh, at the door, just kind of like drenched from the, the rain, uh, you see this, uh, this human male, probably late 30s. He's got like very like kind of thinning black hair and a very, very neatly coiffed pointed beard. Um, Who the hell are you? <laughs> Alrighty then. Uh, Sheriff Holder. Never heard of you. Who are you? We're the people that rescued this here young man. Hell. Well, thank you. Does is Jenny here? Haven't seen her. Do you expect her back anytime soon? Well, I imagine she's out looking for her boy. So you say you uh, you rescued him? Yep. We found him tied up and seemingly ought to be attacked by changelings. So. Right. Uh, everybody, give me a perception check. Um, where I'm trained in questioning people and being a constable, do I get a boon with that? Sure. Cool. Tegor obviously ain't got no time to be chatting with this human fella. <laughs> Sif so will uh, give him a very careful look up and down. Okay. Uh, so uh, everybody except for Thagor and uh, and Ruthless. Um, when uh, when Thagor mentions this um, the, this rescue, you can see he gets just this like this slightest little kind of twitch or quiver uh, on his lip. What did you say your name was? Uh, uh, Sheriff. Sheriff Holder. Terrence Holder. Constable Sifthacker. Not one of my constables. No. Guess I don't have any constables. Maybe you should. You could keep changelings from stealing children in the middle of the night. That changelings? Is 
Sif will kind of be peering at him the whole time. Yes. Came into the boy's room, stole him away. We should should definitely definitely find his mother. Uh, she'll she'll want to know that he's safe. Um, in, the, in the meantime, though, I really can't have you staying here if she's not here. Uh, the inn's right there, or uh, perhaps uh, if you're a, a religious sort sort, uh, perhaps the temple can give you some shelter. I just I can't have you in here if she's not here. You understand, constable. And he kind of, he, he sneers at the word constable. I understand that the boy let us into his home. Perhaps you could go find Jenny at the inn. Sheriff. And we'll stay here to keep the boy safe. Give me a uh, willpower roll. Willpower is like your charisma. Is there a boon for being a constable? There is not, because he outmakes you. Oh, that's what I was afraid of. <laughs> Maybe not. <coughs> very, very well. Um, Stay here, keep, keep the boy safe, and uh, we'll, we'll see if anybody has seen Jenny. We'll see if we can find her. And then he uh, he turns around to leave and heads over towards the inn. That fellow looks like a, a piss poor right sheriff to me. He seems like a poor sheriff to me, too. Um, Jinx. Yeah? You, you think you could maybe eavesdrop on whatever he's, conversations he's going to have at the end? I can definitely give it a try. I definitely agree that there's something odd going on. Alright, so I would like to do the, the stealth following. Um, I doubt I can actually get into the inn without being noticed but um, there's shuttered windows and the such um, so if I have to listen from outside I will unless there seems to be a good way to get inside okay um, remember this isn't the kind of place with glass in the windows just FYI oh I know that's right important lessons from the last inn you were at right <laughs> but also depending on how uh, what the shadows are like um, so give me uh, an agility roll. Uh, you get uh, an extra. You get a boon from being a goblin. Uh, you get a boon from the, uh, the 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 weather, and you can use your trick if you want for a third boon. What what can I use for the third one? Uh, your uh, your trickery talent. Interesting. I didn't realize that could be used for stealthing. Yep. Uh, a challenge roll is whenever you roll an attribute. So you can use it for stealth. You can use it for lockpicking. You can use it for deciphering information. Rogues, that's how they... You know in a lot of games, rogues are like your skill monkeys? Mm -hmm. since, since they don't have skills, this is how they do that. You get a, a boon that you can use on pretty much any roll you make as long as it's only once around. Okay. Um, if it's just the highest I could pick... Um, oh yeah, no, it did it automatically. So 26. All right, so yes, yeah, so you guys very quickly lose sight of Jinx as she uh, she moves out into the uh, into the, the the rain, makes her way across the way to the inn, um, and you kind of you find a you find a place you can't get into the inn, um, but they do have like the the, the windows are open a, a bit to kind of like let the, the the smoke and stuff out to kind of regulate the temperature, because uh, otherwise a, a a roaring fireplace tends to make a place really stuffy. Uh, so mm -hmm. you find a place where you can where you can listen in, um, and you hear the sheriff. Um, and there seems to be like a slight note of like panic in his voice. Uh, he's like, "Hetrick, Marnie, the stranger strangers rescued the boy." Like, 
What do you mean rescued? And like they they brought him they brought him back. And then you hear this uh, this female voice, uh, probably Marnie. It says, "The the we have to get a we have to get him back to the the orchard. It's almost time for the tithing." And the sheriff's like, "I know that, but there's five of them, and they look dangerous." It's like, well, if we if we don't if we don't complete the tithing, then the crops will fail. It's like, I know, I know. What what should we do? It's like, well, we can't uh, we can't send Yosef. We got Yosef guarding the girl upstairs. Go get the Millers. And let them know. It's like, okay, right. And then he uh, he walks out the door. Okay. Um, I will um, squelchily stealth back to the party. Um, hopefully, if the hopefully the the sheriff is not going right immediately back to the house, but if he is, I will try to uh, avoid his notice and or beat him there. Uh, he is actually heading off to the to the east. Okay, that makes my life easier. So I'm going to you know take take caution to not take notice, um, slip in and um, you know, out of the out of the party. Which of you which of you seems less likely to blurt out what I'm going to say loudly? Probably not Thagor. I that's what I'm thinking. Not Thagor. Um, so I'd like to slip in um, and it's probably, I mean, unless, unless Thagor sees me and asks immediately, um, I'll probably try to find one of you that is not Thagor and not immediately with the child. The, uh, the child has not left Ruthless's side. Yeah, hey, I was afraid of that. Okay, so Trevor's Ruthless... So, um, either going to Bismarck or Sif? Whichever you'd like. Sif is still kind of watching at the window. Uh, whichever window is in the kitchen area. Just uh, also the one that seems competent. So I'm going to. He's busy by the fire trying to dry out his boots. All right. So you are by the window, and a uh, sodden, sodden goblin uh, kind of sidles up to you because, or squelches up to you, I should say. Uh, so <laughs> it's pretty much what we. It's pretty much the bad news we thought. They, they handed over the child, or. They are looking for, a, I said the Millers, I don't, I'm guessing that's probably the family that runs the mill, uh, the, based on the size of the town, to try to oust us. They think we look dangerous. Um, They're not wrong. Well, um, they need to get the, they, they say they need to get the boy back to the orchard tonight or the for a tithe or the crops will fail and i think i think they have his mother under guard upstairs they said something about someone who's watching the girl upstairs at the end you mean yes um i figured i should get this back first and i figured you wouldn't blurt out what i was saying in response on hearing it. All right then. Well, Thagor and Ruthless have been pretty adamant about not collecting another one. Ah. <laughs> uh. I mean, in theory, the if we can just keep him, the whole town's in on it. But in theory, if we can just 
keep him away from the orchard until the tithe time, it won't matter? Did, I, did they say midnight, or did they just say it was tonight? I'm sorry. Uh, they just said it was tonight. All right. I think we can probably do that. Hopefully. Um. This mark. Could you come over here? He scuttles over on his four little feet. Kinda. Heard uh, Jinx over and Bismarck into a corner. So, the town is sacrificing the child to the changelings as a tithe for good crops. That makes some sense. There is a solstice coming. Yes, apparently their tithe is due tonight. So, which, you think? Ruthless was saying something about changelings. Changelings, witches? I mean, I'm, I'm not a theologist. But I can tell you when the solstice is going to be. It's going to mm -hmm. be how long from now, Chris? Uh, technically from now in three hours and a bit. Well, Chris. the solstice is in about three hours, so that's mm -hmm. probably our time. Uh, probably. Stars, celestial bodies bring very strong magic. So if we wait past the time, it probably will prevent the witch or whatever from doing whatever the, the witch is doing. Uh, if we do save... There's a... Jinx sort of pauses, thinks about their words. What is the likelihood that they will substitute the mother? Um, Chris, I'm a follower of the old religion. They probably want a child specifically. You can make an intellect roll. Sure. Uh, I'll also point out that you act have an actual priestess of one of the old religions over yeah, there. Yeah, sorry. She's got a she's got a child attached to her. Eighteen. Um. From what you know as a practitioner of the old faith, um, a lot of the a lot of the old faith uh, doesn't so much do the human sacrifice anymore. Um, so you're not really well versed in it, uh, but your understanding is that uh, usually it is someone who is specially selected or has uh, special qualities. Uh, hence why you get the virgin sacrifice or the special child sacrifice or things of that nature. Um, so to your, to your knowledge, they probably can't just substitute in another. So from stories I've heard growing up and things. Right. Um, they, they're probably looking for the child specifically. that sort of thing isn't usually done anymore. I mean, shouldn't we be asking the expert in the corner? Well, probably would be a good idea if you can, if you think you can get the child away from her for a moment. I'd appreciate that. Um, I'm not sure how I would do that. Uh, when you guys made your way through Pell's bedroom, you did see some of his toys and stuff in there. Uh, 
Hey, uh, little fella. Who's far larger than I am? His name is Pell. Pell. Ever see a clockwork before? No. Come on, show me your toys and I'll do a little spidery dance up the stairs. I'll teach you all about magic. Excellent. Um, so yeah, he'll he'll go with you. You have the feeling he's now that he's home. You know he's he feels a little bit a little bit safer. So he'll uh, he will go with Bismarck. And I'll pretend I'm a toy for the next while. Okay. All right. So, what am I rolling for here? Uh, you can roll intellect with uh, one boon for being a priest and another boon for specifically being a priest of the High King. So two boons. Or the uh, the Stag King. Yes, two boons. I'll take it. Ooh. That's a phenomenal roll. All right. Um, so, uh, a couple things come to mind. One, uh, changelings are not powerful enough to enter into this sort of fey pact. Changelings are, like, not low men on the, the fey totem pole. That would be the, that would be the goblins. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, they are they are like one step up. They do not have the they do not have the capacity uh, for this sort of thing. So there's undoubtedly if there's changelings involved, there's probably fey involved. But it's something higher up the chain. Um, in terms of sacrifice, the sacrifice has to have meaning. There has to be a reason for it. Uh, and since you rolled a twenty five. Uh, the meaning is most likely a child that was born on the tithing night. Okay, that makes sense. I'll explain that to everybody. So, the changelings probably were the good guys. Or they? their henchmen. Hmm. Come to take the child away. They did say he was theirs. Yes. Ah, yes, that's a good point. They certainly didn't seem concerned for his safety. And at uh, about at that time, over the uh, over the din of the rain hitting the uh, the slate roof, uh, you guys can hear uh, shouts from outside. We need to get him away from here. As Did somebody order an angry mob? Uh, no, but I think we have one anyway. Ah, good. <laughs> I like to think that uh, that Thagor is like peeking out the window and can see the flames and the pitchforks as he uh, as he asks that question. Can we get him out the way we brought him in? Go out the back, uh, oh. and leave the house for them to knock in to slow him down a little bit that might be the best bet take him anywhere not easily visible I mean we could shoot them from here we probably shouldn't kill an entire town that's a very good point is it so, but are we are we gonna try to hide on the roof? Are we hiding in the trees? Well, if we're gonna leave, we should go to the inn and get the boy's mother. We can do that once he's safe. They're not going to do anything to her. She's not. Well, he's only he's only going to be safe if he's with us. Yes. How about we get out before they get here, and we can figure out where to go as we do it. Okay. There's, see, we find a shed or a stable, staging ground, and 
we'll just do leapfrog as we need to because if we keep arguing this, we're going to be even here. more flat footed. Um, I've had some training as a guide, unless one of you is more comfortable in the. Ominous little die roll to toss in on us, Chris. Uh -huh. <laughs> I've had some training as a guide, unless one of you is more at ease with the forest. I was a high woman. No, or that really. Cool I guys. was a prospector. Uh, Despite what most people think of goblins, I largely was raised in the city. I think we should just get the fuck out of here. Yes. All right, we fine. leave the boy, right? No, we're not leaving the boy. And we're not killing them all. No. Uh, I'm... Is going to uh, grab Pell. We oh, need to go find your mom, but we're going to have to do so very quietly. Can you be very quiet for us? Okay. Excellent. So she's um, going to carefully scoop him up, given that she's still wounded, uh, and head toward, uh, well, away from the um, angry mob, wherever they happen to be. They're over there? Okay. Yeah. Well, apparently we're going west. Yeah, they, they are definitely coming from the east. Easy to hear them yelling at each other. We will head west. Um, and uh, uh, Ruth, actually, since you've got the, the highest perception. At the end's in the middle. Uh-huh. Um, so, Ruth, you hear, you hear some shouting from the mob, uh, and you hear some shouting from not the mob, from, like, a little bit south of them. Okay. Uh, and the mob is like, get out of our way, Garrett. This, is, this has to be done. Garrett's like, no, we, not anymore. It has to stop. The mob's like, get out of our way. So there seems to be a kerfuffle between at least one townsperson and the mob. See, we only have to kill half of them. All right, let's 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 scooch out. Uh, before Thagor leaves, he's going to fetch his boots. and I mean, I hope they're dry, but they're probably not. They are not even remotely dry. <laughs> but, but they're warm. Oh, yeah. They're warm and squishy. They, they, yeah, that's, that's better, I'm sure. The, it, is that, it is that warm sort of wet. Uh, I will string, string my bow as well. They are moist. Ew. There's no reason to bring out the M word. Okay, so you guys, uh, you guys slip out the, uh, slip out the, the boys' bedroom again. Yeah. 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 Might as well. And uh, where are you heading to? West. If there's a guy confronting the confronting the mob, maybe we should bag him up. I agree. I was thinking that maybe I should go check upstairs and make sure that the woman's okay. Upstairs at the inn? Upstairs at the inn. Because I can transform, right? You can. Alright, I'll take the boy west. And cover my tracks behind me. I will go with you because I am also sneak. Excellent. Okay. And you lot can free her, help hold the townspeople at bay. Sounds great. Excellent. So it's terrible idea. <laughs> it totally is. Split the party. Uh, I'll <laughs> be right back. Possibly go wrong. Um, so yeah, uh, she will take the boy and head west. She'll carry him too, so his feet aren't leaving little footprints. Okay. All right. So uh, Sif and Jinx are heading west with the boy. Yep. Ruth is going to. Take on the take on the identity of just a townsperson and go into the inn. Exactly. Okay. And Bismarck and uh, Thagor are headed towards the mob. Sounds okay. right. This is terrible. Back. 
Alrighty. So, uh, Ruth, you, uh, you make your way into the inn, and nobody really gives you a second glance. Um, but you can tell that they, uh, they all look worried. There's probably, like, four or five people, uh, in the, in, in the, the inn. And they all have this kind of worried look on their face. Um, the, uh, the proprietor, uh, fairly, you know, early, early 60s, kind of like that kind of graying blonde hair, like big handlebar mustache. It's like, you look damp. You know, fetch you, fetch you some hot cider. That'd be wonderful. Thank you. No problem. He goes in the, goes in the back. Comes back a couple minutes later with a, a steaming mug of hot cider. It's like, you don't look, uh, you don't look familiar. Oh, wait, you have a little bit. You have a look at like the the Millers about you. It must be their sister from out of town. They mentioned. I don't think I know them. I'm just passing through. It's uh, oh. getting close to be the. The solstice. Oh, that it is. That it is. It's not fit for man nor dog out there. That's a true story. It is pouring rain. Well, can we get you something to eat? We got some stew on. Uh, no, I think just the drinks will be fine. Okay. And I'll plop down a a chair looking around is there like a staircase going up and that sort of thing there is okay Let's see what kind of skills I got that would get me up there climb stairs um yeah anything anything where you can convince me I would have trained you in stealth would be helpful well, I'm pretty good at hiding from animals. Yeah. It's one of the things in this game. Uh, boons and banes are generally pretty easy to uh, come by. It, it's more a matter of, like, you're just like, because I was trained as a, you know, I, I'm used to wilderness survival. I know how to move quietly, that sort of thing. Well, that's exactly what I am. I'm a high, I used to be a criminal highwayman, right? Yep. There, that's perfect. Um, but, uh, as you, uh, as you finish off your cider, it is nice and warm and spiced and pleasant. But you can give me a strength roll with two beans. And with only two slightly beans? drugged. Yeah, I was going to say, I would, I'm not sure I wanted to drink that. The cider's free, the drugs cost extra. Two beans, okay. Yeah. Well, that didn't look good. All right. Uh, so, yeah, so... Yeah, your your head starts uh, starts swimming, um, and you are considered poisoned for the next minute. Okay, I don't believe changelings are resistant to poison. I think only dwarves. No, nope. no disease and charm are mixed resistance to, not uh, poison. The hospitality in this town leaves much to be desired. Yeah, the drink has quite the kick there, Barkeep. Oh, that it does. That it does. So you're from out of town, you say? I am. Yeah, what brings you by on this uh, cold and somewhat wicked evening? I was just passing through, and I didn't look comfy if I could get myself out of the rain. I see. Do you rent rooms? Uh, yes, we do. We do have a couple of rooms. Uh, give me another strength check. This uh, this time you have two banes and then another one because you were poisoned. Yikes! Yeah, I'm not really that strong <laughs> to start with. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, so you are now considered to be defenseless. 
Okay. Uh, so you cannot defend yourself. You have a defense of five. You cannot use actions. Uh, challenge ratings using attributes automatically fail. You can, however, still perceive your surroundings. Okay. And you can still make perception checks. Um, but after the next round, uh, you need to make another strength challenge, which you will automatically fail. And the, yeah, the last thing, uh, the last thing you remembered before unconsciousness takes you is uh, your eyes kind of swimming, your head feeling awfully light, uh, and then blackness takes you. I would turn into, if I'm incapacitated, I turn back into my normal form, which is the sticky stick and mud thing, right? Um, let me check, because you're not technically incapacitated, you're unconscious. Uh, and they are actually different things, because incapacitated means you're rolling to see whether or not you're dying. And you are not that. Uh, so yes, you are not actually incapacitated, and you have not touched anything made of iron. In this game, um, from what I can tell, I'll look it up later. Uh, incapacitated is a is a state; it's not an affliction. Okay. So incapacitated when when uh, when you guys are fighting the zombies and you're rolling the d6s to see if you stabilized or died, that is incapacitated. I'm starting to think this barkeep's name was Bill Cosby. Oh. Ouch. Alrighty, uh, so let's go to uh, Jinx and uh, Jinx and Seth. You guys have uh, have made your way to the uh, to the west. Where are you headed to west? Ah, into the forest. Um, we'll go south of that house. Okay. So kind of cut through the grass here. Um, and Sif is going to be using her experience as a guide and a constable to kind of cover their tracks as they go. Okay. It's it's not difficult at all with this rain yes. and, and the mud and everything. Um, you do notice that uh, that Jinx makes very, very few tracks. It's a very handy skill you've got there. Um, so, which woods are you heading to? Are you heading to, like, the ones over to the very west, or this little patch of trees to the south? Nope, over to the west where I put Sif. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so you guys make your way, uh, make your way into the woods. Um, and you notice that the trees here and the grasses here and the roots here are very, very, very thick. Um, with my knowledge as a guide, just how unnatural is this? Uh, very, and uh, both Jinx and uh, Jinx and uh, Sif can give me perception checks. There's um, that the the karma or the the roll. <laughs> uh, can I get a boon for being a trained guide and a constable? Uh, yes. So two. Sweet. Well, that heraldry doesn't come up very often, though, does it? <laughs> came out <laughs> in the last game. And at the start of this game. <laughs> also, were there any sort of barns or anything? Because that was, that was another thing I was 
hoping to keep a lookout for. Um, you don't see any. You don't see any burns. So you do see a couple of like small, like tool sheds, garden sheds, that sort of thing, but nothing, nothing the size of a stable. Mm-hmm. Basically, nothing really good for hiding out in. That's not a uh, residence. Uh, not in the not in the parts of the village that you've seen. Um, actually, there would probably be there would probably be a small stable at the inn. But that would be towards where the mob was, and we were kind of going away, so. Yeah. Trying. Alright, uh, so Sif, as you're like, hmm, this seems awfully thick. This is really, like, unusually thick. Um, and as you watch, the roots and everything are growing and moving. Toward us or away from us? Just, just generally thickening up around the area. Um, like they're 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 not wrapping around you or anything, but they are very very much making the forest more and more impassable. Okay, that's creepy. Uh, I'm going to uh, point that out to Jinx. Something is affecting the forest here. And not in a good way. Um, Jinx swears quietly. So, t- since you know woods more than I, do you think, and some of the old religion, do you, would you think it's worse for us to keep going this way than what we face behind? Chris, any hint? Um, you're not sure because you don't know what exactly is behind you, and you don't know what exactly is deeper into the woods. Yeah, I you, don't know. Do I think that we can keep on top of these roots, though? You do know that before long, the section of the forest is going to be completely impassable, and you need to decide which side of that impasse you're going to be on. I mean, it's not great, but there are a couple tool sheds. Or we could see if any of these houses are actually uh, unoccupied. Let's see if we can make our way south. And she'll point to... Yeah, the one down by that one, Chris. See if we can hide uh, just inside the tree line there. Alright, so you guys make your way make your way south, staying on the on the village side of the of the forest. Just yeah. barely. Gotcha. Yep. Alright. Uh, meanwhile, Bismarck and uh, and Thagar, you guys move forward to uh, to confront the uh, the mob, and you can see uh, there is a there's a gentleman basically standing in front of them, uh, a fairly big burly human guy, bald. Black beard, definite like singe marks, uh, and he is holding like a forge hammer in his hand. Does he look like the leader of the mob? Is he the one arguing with the other fellow? Uh, he is the one arguing with the mob. Oh, he's the one arguing with the mob. Oh, he's a good guy. Excellent. And the, the mob. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so the mob is like, Gorvin, get out of the way. You know this has to happen. And he's like, no, we have sacrificed enough. I lost I lost my sister to this goddamn thing. 
And my parents are so ashamed they didn't tell me until my mom was dying. So no. It ends. I'll, uh, I'll scurry up next to him. With, with the rain pittering off this little force field I have surrounding me. Uh, he's not wrong. He um, clearly has the right idea. The uh, the guy leading the leading the mob just shuts back. It's like, if we don't do this, the Lady of Apples comes and she will kill all of us. It's one or all. Show us where she is and we'll kill her. Well, that's a way to do it. Yeah, sure. At about that time, since it seems a dramatically appropriate moment, there is a... Uh, you guys kind of, like, look over and... Uh, uh, Jinx and, uh, and Sif, you can see this as well. Um, but from the trees here in the center... you see this impossibly beautiful woman green skin dark green hair just kind of steps out of the tree um, and, and like not out of the trees out of the tree and she uh, she looks towards the mob she's like the offering was not there someone killed my children. Uh-oh. You will all pay. Black. Well. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I'm safely drugged in the inn. <laughs> Ruthless is safely unconscious in the inn. <laughs> I suppose that's one way of looking at it. <laughs> well, you're half right. <laughs> Alright. Um, so, uh, any living creature that can see her uh, must make an intellect challenge roll with one bane. Those of you who ate, who ate apples get to make it at two. Sweet. Nope. Am, am I living? You are considered to be a living being. Um. So. Good. Um, yes, you uh, you and Sif don't have to worry about it yet. Oh, okay. Oh, whew. And, and I believe goblins are immune to charm anyway, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Immune to damage from charm, disease, and... Yep, so you're immune to damage from disease and the charmed and diseased condition. Oh, very nice. Um, Being a goblin's good. But, uh, but Thagor and Bismarck, uh... This woman, you just, you just can't bring yourself to, to raise your arms against her. She is, she is literally everything that you've ever wanted, everything that you've ever desired. Uh, so you consider her to be a trusted ally and close friend and cannot target her with anything. Excellent. Time to kill villagers. It's kind of what you wanted anyway. Yeah. Um, and uh, so she will uh, turn to the, the villagers and basically with just like a wave of her hand. Uh, what will she cast? 
She will cast that. It's about that time I need you to start getting ready for work anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so she just kind of like reaches out with her hand, and you see all of these uh, all of these vines uh, start to really erupt from the mud uh, around the around the villagers, and basically just start squeezing them with the thorns. Blood starts flowing pretty freely. Uh, needless to say, uh, those that are uh, those that are not killed freak the hell out. Uh, at the end of her turn, uh, everybody that she has charmed uh, moves up to half the speed towards her. Uh, so from over at the edge of the uh, of the the, the village, uh, Sif and uh, and Jinx, you just you start to hear screams, screams of pain and screams of fear, kind of co-mingled together. And at about that time, you notice that the forest just kind of seals itself off, like just kind of wraps around this little village, so that nobody can get in or out. Uh oh! I'm gonna um, gonna turn to Pal. Okay, I know, I know it's scary sounding. But we have to be quiet. And we have to quiet. We're gonna be quiet, and we're gonna try to keep hiding. Okay. Oh, oh okay. Uh, Sif's going to cover Pal's ears and turn him so his back is to the village, so that he can't see what's going on. Maybe wrap her cloak around him too. And uh, yeah, we're n I, she's not moving. She is not trying to help the villagers at all. Well, good luck, everybody. Let me know how this turns out. All right, thanks, son. All right, man. Have a good shift. Um, so yeah, so as, as this is happening, um, you do see uh, some people uh, kind of like st stick their heads out of the inn. Um, you did not actually. Did Ruthless like let them know what she changed into? Sorry, did I? Like they would have saw me change before before I walked into the inn. Uh, my coworker, my co teammates, I guess. Okay, perfect. So yeah, so you do see some people come out of the inn to kind of see like what's going on to, to see what the screams is, uh, but you don't see anybody that looks like ruthless amongst them. Uh, let's see her turn. Uh, she's gonna keep killing villagers. Uh, what else do? Uh, she'll cast that. So yeah, so some of the villagers try to run away from her brambles. And she basically just, again, up with the hand and these vines erupt from the ground and wrap around them so they can't move. And then the razor sharp brambles just rake across their flesh. Um, Sif and, uh, and Jinx, you can see uh, both, uh, both Bismarck and, uh, and Thagor are just kind of like slack jawed walking towards her. And Sif, now that you can see her, you can give me that uh, intelligence check with a... Uh, oh, uh, damn. Uh, one, one bane, two banes if you ate the apples. I did not eat any apples. Was the bane only if you ate apples? It's one due to her power. It's two if you ate the apples. Ah, gotcha. Ouch. Um, so the same thing. You just start walking towards her. And, and Am I taking Pell with me? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, so my arms just fall away from him and staring at this terrifying 
goddess creature. I start shuffling toward it. Yeah. And so, Jinx, uh, you see this and you look up and you don't really see what the big deal is. Like, you've seen fairy creatures before. Yeah. But then you I am a fairy creature. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but then you notice that uh, uh, your your teammates uh, all seem to have fallen under the thrall of uh, of this of this creature. Okay. Um, <laughs> shit. Do I know anything about uh, breaking thrall? Like, if like if is it, is it a like if I you know they can't see it or if I damage them, I might be able to break it. Um, generally speaking, if somebody is charmed and they get damaged by the person that's charming them, it will break. But not by, from another source. Not to your knowledge. And I don't think necessarily blocking their line of sight is going to be a thing. Shit. Correct. Um, your knowledge of charms, though, is like once somebody does snap out of it, they, they retain their senses... Uh, for probably a couple of days before they're susceptible again. Right. Uh, well, I guess I'm still gonna, like, have to at least make a try to to try to get her out of it. Um, so I'm gonna try to, like, see if I can, you know, turn her around, you know, you know, the, do, do the things that people try to do, like, you know, shake, you know, give the is there a knockout mechanic in this? Um, you could you could not necessarily knock. Mm, There's not really a knockout mechanic, but uh, let's say sure you could try to uh, like hit her hard on the the back of the head or something. Um, if you succeed, then she could make a strength roll. It would it would like it wouldn't be like a you know hours out. It would be like you know. I'm going more for the stun days, like try to literally snap her out. Yeah, um, yeah. Make a make an attack roll, a strength-based attack roll. Um, and uh, if you succeed, then uh, she'll get to make a strength check to see if she succumbs or not. That sounds good. I'm sorry if I'm doing this wrong. <laughs> Apologies, Sip. No. <laughs> All right, so you got... Like, you're like, ah, oh, she's tall. She's taller than me. Um, but then it dawns on you that, like, if you find something that you could, like, maybe throw it at the back of her head, yeah, it might work. Uh, in the meantime, she's going to kill some more villagers. Thagor and Bisrock are going to get closer. Are there any rocks or anything? Oh, I'll wait till my turn. <laughs> Sorry. Um... Yeah, right now where everybody's charmed, it's really only her turn and your turn. So, uh, um, I'm looking for yeah. So I'm gonna look around see if there's anything I can sort of I can sort of do a little throw to binger, um, just because I know I can't take on a <laughs> very a, a, bi a big bad solo, and I need at least one. I need, I need a bad, like my friends to not die to her. Uh, yeah, there there's uh, there's plenty of uh, of rocks and stones and stuff around. Like the, you can pick up like some of the loose uh, cobblestones from the the roadway, even. Uh, cobblestone's pretty big. Yep, but there's like little brick. The the town is not in great repair, and it's just had a bunch of like vines and stuff shoot all through the. Yeah, I mean, honestly, even like a yeah, I, I I'm not trying to kill her. I'm just trying to. Bink. Is yep. that still a strength, or is it a different role to throw it? Uh, it would be agility to throw it. Oh, good. Alrighty. Um, yeah, I'll say she doesn't have her shield up. Because she's just kind of walking slack jawed. No, she's walking slack jawed. She's not trying to protect herself whatsoever right now. Okay. Um, so, Sif can give me a strength roll. Any boons or banes? Uh, no. Alright. Oh. A failure, which is exactly what you wanted. So, <laughs> so, so Jinx basically picks up like this good-sized rock, 
goes like, no, no, that might kill her. <laughs> Picks up like a slightly smaller rock and then launches at your head and basically um, hits you, basically stuns you for the round. Uh, but it does it does knock you out of the out of the charm. You kind of shake your head. Okay, she'll fall to her knees, um, kind of clutch the back of her head, and sorry about that. Rise, Are you with us? Pain. Do I take any damage from that? Um, no. Okay, thought I should check. All right. Um. So yeah. So Sif kind of snaps out of it. Um, at this point, you guys are probably thinking back to the big map. You're probably pretty close to the inn. Um, there is. Is Pell staying staying in the back where where we wanted him to? Yes, Pell is, Pell is doing what he was told. Oh, good. Alrighty. So at this point. Probably do some. Alrighty, so uh, everybody can uh, everybody can decide whether they want to do fast or slow actions. Um, Trevor, how open is Ruth about being a changeling with the rest of the people? Not at all. Okay. Well, we know now. see her yet do we i uh, know she uh, she was drugged unconscious in the inn yeah so we don't know now or didn't we see her change when she went in the inn uh shape change yeah 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 but various people can shape shift so depending on it doesn't necessarily immediately out her as a change like yeah it's root does magic yeah root does magic stuff all the time So the dryad gets two actions. Mm -hmm. She doesn't really need to move, so she will just stay. She will stay fast. But, but we have a chance of of thwacking our friends <laughs> and maybe yeah. pulling them out. All right. Uh, so uh, Nabian on her turn, her first action, uh, she is just. She's just going to town on these townspeople, and there's not many of them left. You have a feeling she's probably going to turn her attention to uh, the others soon. That will use the second one of those spells. Uh, but that will deal with the townspeople. Uh, Bismarck drinks uh, Sif and Thagor. So what can the us charm people do? Um, you can you can do things that you can't target her, uh, and you consider her to be a trusted friend and ally. Well, she seems to have this well under control. She she definitely seems to. There are there are. Uh, you know, as you're sitting there kind of slack-jawed staring at her, there are, like, the screams in the background as the villagers are being torn asunder. She's not damaged, so I can't... I, I don't have anything. Okay. I'll defend in case the villager charges me. Okay. Uh... Drinks and Sif. Okay, uh, is this uh, my round of being stunned? Uh, yes. I will clutch my head. Alright, uh, I, I can try that on them, too. Um, alright, so, looks like, sorry, let me do the map. Um, you're also aware that as a clockwork, uh, Bismarck has a uh, has a key mechanism, and if you basically if you turn off the key, he becomes an object as opposed to a creature. And then if you crank it up again, he becomes a creature. Objects cannot be charmed. Okay, so I'm trying to actually I don't quite know everyone's icons yet. Where am I? Uh, all right, so 
I bonked Sif, who I think is right here. Where you're, yep, that's Sif. Look, I'm guessing I'm way... Oh, I'm way up here. Okay. Um, then we got that. We got that. Um, this can Murph I... is the crouchy looking guy. Yep. Right can above I stealth? Us. Can I actually get to Bismarck doing the stealth thing? Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. I am small. Helps that there's all these screaming dying villagers in the thorns. And I would like to uh, grab his key. Okay. Alright, so yeah, so you, you kind of sneak up. Uh, she does seem to be preoccupied with the villagers. This will be the last turn where there's villagers for her to preoccupy herself with. Uh, and you basically turn down the key. Uh, so Bismarck, you're no longer charmed, but you are currently an object. Hey. Just for this turn. Uh, Thagor will uh, defend. Uh, her second turn is uh, getting rid of more villagers. Um, and at the end of the turn, you see uh, the uh, the innkeeper come out. It's like, Lady of the Apples, the strangers. They're the ones that took the tithe. They're the ones that killed your children. And you see he's got ruthless in his arms, and he just kind of like lays her down on the ground. Do I count as one of her children? No. Uh, end of the round, everybody can decide whether they would like to do fast or slow. Uh, one moment. If I want to put the key back in right off the bat, that's fast, correct? Correct. If, if you're not okay. doing anything else, fast action. Uh, I'm trying to be, remain sneaky. I'm trying to be stealth, but so if, if I should, because of that, I should go slow. Otherwise, it's going to be fast. So I can just pop the key in. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're still stealth because she hasn't looked around for you or anything, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, so Bismarck, Jinx, and uh, Naimi, and I'll go first. Uh, she will use her ability to go before the PCs do. And she will walk over towards, uh, towards Sif, who she sees kind of like snapping out of, uh, out of her thing. She's like, you, you do not love me. Instead, you will fear me. And I need you to make a will say, a will challenge with one bane. Oof. <laughs> nice. Um, so as she says that, you can see uh, her, the tattered remnants of the dress that she's wearing, it just kind of shifts. And you can see the faces of the souls of every child that has been sacrificed to her over the years and the decades. Uh, but you manage to just kind of like steal down and you're like, you know that if you, if you can end this, then those children will be free. But you do not suffer any negative effects from seeing this. And this the, the anger, in, not the scare. <laughs> yeah. Um, end this, as in kill her, or just make to mourning. As in kill her. Okay. Uh, that would take us to uh, uh, Bismarck, I think. I think I'd let uh, Jinx go first. Uh, I believe Jinx did. She wound you back up. Oh, I'm all yes. awake. Well, if you can't dodge a ball, you can't dodge a wrench. Okay. 
Why didn't that roll? I just need to say, as someone who has lived with mechanics for, for 15, 20 years, I am delighted by this spell. <laughs> or your mechanical spells. Um, so, you're casting Jury Rig on yourself? or I'm trying to cast Jury Rig on her. Sorry, because Jury Rig is like a healing thing. Oh, Magic Wrench. Wrong one. Alright. Uh, and the reason why you can't click it again is because you used it all. Okay. Doesn't matter. I missed. A seven is a miss. Uh, that will bring us to Sif. Uh, Sif is going to um, move to the outside range for her bow, which is long. Okay. So I'm not sure how far away that is. Long is like 100 yards. Okay. So I'm going to... Um, she move... It. Where is the inn from here? North, south, east, west? Uh, it is like southwest. Back that way? Okay. Um, she will back away west. I'm not sure how far away. Um, and she will shoot at uh, the jolly green lady with her bow. Okay. Uh, where I have training as a constable and as a guide, do I have any boons for that? Uh, not for combat, no. Okay. So you fire off your arrow, and uh, just at the last moment, a bunch of branches basically form up in front of her and uh, deflect it. Oh, I can't get my arrows to count down. Uh, if you... Left, uh, right click. Uh, yep. that's... As someone who accidentally gave themselves like 20 extra arrows trying <laughs> to do that. <laughs> right. Uh... Her second action. What is she going to do? Oh, she is going to. Oh, can um, can Sif speak as well during that turn, or? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, she's going to call out. I believe in the gods, and they don't need sacrifices. Right. So, she will cast that on that. So, I will need Sif to make an agility check. Who oh, no. knew? Oh, no! Okay. <laughs> So she just she reaches out and these vines erupt all around you, entangling you and immobilizing you. Oh no, that's not good. That's not good at all. All right, uh, that is everybody. Oof. She gets four actions this turn. Jesus. Jinx is on fast. Uh, can I repeat the uh, Throg? Uh, wait, sorry if I mispronounce your name. Uh, oh, he's not. The player's not here right now, is he? No, Don. Don has to work at ten thirty. Okay. I, I've, so I've got his character, so that's fine. Okay, but he's still he's still in slack jawed awe at the dryad. He is still he, charmed. Yes. Okay, so I would like to try to repeat the trick I did with Sif, where I. Take a rock that's not going to kill him and get him upside the head. Okay. Oh. Uh, 
I assume that's just an agility roll again? Yep. Alrighty. So yeah, so you throw the throw the rock. He kind of like, oh, kind of shakes his head. You can see he he becomes clear again. Oh, good. Right. Uh, everybody else on their slow actions. These light sources that we have going off. What are they? Uh, they're uh, like street lanterns. Are they full of oil? They are. Yeah. Are they like way up in the air kind of deal, or are they just? Uh, they're they're on poles, but they're it's not like a big city, so they're probably only about like six feet or so off the, off the ground. So are they more like just tall tiki torches, or are they heavily embedded in the ground, too heavy to pick up? They're pretty heavily embedded in the ground, uh, and and then they're like actual glass lanterns. For street lights, it, basically. Yes. Yeah, it's so not easily to, to knock them over kind of deal. No, but the, the lanterns are designed to be like removed so people can take them down to fill them up and then hang them back up. Yeah, but six feet's a long way for me. You can climb it. I mean, you're a rack. Spidery. Oh, yeah, I'm a spider. Okay, so my movement's going to be to try to get up the pole. Uh, yeah, you can climb that easily. And then for my action, I'm going to grab one of these lanterns. And I'm going to... Th oh, man, there's two options. She's a wood person, but she has a tree. Does that tree look... Like, the one she stepped out of, does it look any different than any other tree? Um, mm, not really. It just looks like a tree. Okay, I gotta toss this lantern at her then. Okay. Agility, is it? Agility. I am not very good at this. Sometimes you only have to get close. Horseshoes and hand grenades. It isn't even close. That is <laughs> not even close. Uh, but you do notice that as she sees it coming in, uh, even though you throw it afterwards, she she shies oh. away from it. And uh, Mr. Mr. Wizard, Mr. Magician, can make an intellect roll. Does it have anything to do with heraldry? No. <laughs> Keep trying. Um, so yeah, she shies away from it, and uh, you remember reading in a book someplace that uh, fairy folk uh, don't like iron, and she can't be sure what metal that is. She's more worried about the lantern than the... She's much more worried about the lantern than the fire. Where the hell's that blacksmith? Uh, parts of him are over there. <laughs> Are blacksmith oh, no. hammers made of iron? Might be. All uh, right, uh, Sif. Uh, it says under wealth comfortable that I should have a dagger. Yep. Uh, I would like to try to squirm that dagger out so I can start cutting at these vines that have me trapped. Okay. Uh, that's no problem. Basically, you can use your action to free yourself. Excellent. I will do that. Okay. And her turn. Uh, what did she do? Well, she sees uh, she sees Sif getting free. So with one action, she will uh, launch a rooting touch. Uh, 
Oh, that's only a 10. Uh, second action. Oh yeah, my defense is 15. Uh, she will throw, uh, she basically will grab like a, an acorn, or a handful of acorns, and chant, and her second action she will cast magic acorns. Uh, and her third action, she will actually throw the acorn. Uh, so let's see. So let's uh, a 15 against Sif? Uh, her defense is 15. Uh, so one point of damage as she uh, throws this acorn at you and it kind of explodes a little bit. Poof. Oh. Well, acorn shards. And her fourth action, she will do that again. All right. Uh, end of the round. Um, so yeah, so she's just throwing these uh, these like little exploding acorns at Sif. Um, Thagor is no longer stunned. Uh, everybody can decide if they're going to do fast or slow actions. I will do sleepy actions. Okay. <clears throat> to... Am I prone right now? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, now, I have a question. Is, um... First off, I don't know if I see the, I see the uh, comment in chat. Is is that an actual thing that would have been yelled out that we should try to burn the tree, or is there any sort of... Would I even have any knowledge to attack the tree? Because I don't think I would, but it's... Again, I don't know what goblins what goblins know about dryads or not. Bismarck will yell out to use iron against you. That doesn't even get... As a goblin, that, just getting a, that, that doesn't even get a response. It's just like, really... No. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, you wouldn't know anything about dryads and trees or anything. That's what I figured, but I wanted to double check. Yep. Alright. Uh, Bismarck on fast actions. I'm going to throw another lantern. Okay. Well, hopefully it's made of iron. Is it made of iron? Um, probably. Iron is a fairly common metal for, for smithing. Damn it. There are some nice fires in the village to go with the carnage, though. It's a good thing it's been raining so much. Uh, that will bring us to uh, Jinx, Sif, and Thagor. All right. Um, so I have released all my friends from the mind control. Um, so, and I don't have any reason to think to attack the train, which I assumed ends fine. Uh, so, I guess I'm going to shoot at her from behind and hope that dryads are affected by piercing damage. I guess from arrows. And I am going to use my boon on that, because... Oh, shit. Yes, yes, I'm using the boon on that. Uh, does it... Is there any advantage for the fact that I'm rolling from behind... I'm shooting from behind? Uh, yeah, I'll give you another boon for that. She, she seems very, very focused on the uh, guy lobbing iron at her. Yes. All right, I rolled a 15. A 15 will miss her, though. Ah, wow. it lies. Oh. Okay. Uh, Sif and Thagor. Uh, has been trained to, you know, keep an eye on confrontations. And uh, is would be able to notice that she's dodging the iron as much as possible? Yes. I'm conveniently near a light. I would like to grab it and rush her. Okay. And when I'm close enough that I think I can hit her, 
Uh, swing it at her. Okay. So you're just using it like a melee weapon? Uh, using it kind of like a flail, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, just cluck your, your flail then, that makes sense. So close to being an 18. Thagor. Uh, Thagor is probably just going to hit her with an axe. This has been an entire round. <laughs> nope. We're just going to die. That, yeah, that. We're, we're not doing well. Uh, her turn. She hasn't taken any damage yet, so she has no reason to flee. <laughs> and she still has four acorns left and four actions. We are sadly trapped in this village. Uh, so she is going to uh, throw an acorn at each of you. So against Sif. Yeah. Uh, it's only a 12. No. Defense is 15. Uh, that is only an 11 against Jinx. That is no. And only a 5 against Bismarck. Uh, no. And her last action... Well, since Bismarck is no longer affected by her charm, she will use raiment of faces on him, and I need you to make a willpower challenge roll with one main. All right. Does it look good? Uh, so you pick up one insanity. Oh. Uh, so you are you are frightened for a number of rounds equal to your new insanity total. Uh, one. Yeah. Uh, so frightened means you do everything with one bane, and you cannot take fast actions. Okay. Uh, but that is all four of her actions. You guys notice that Ruth is still laying there on the ground, un unconscious. Uh, everybody can decide if they would like to be fast or slow. No, only three actions. Am I still within swinging distance of her? Yeah, you would have like moved right up to her. Right, uh, Sif is on fast action. Yes, um, Sif is going to take another swing at her. Again, still using the lantern as a flail. Oh, that is a hit. Finally. Would I use the same damage as the flail, or...? Yes. Okay. Take eight! Alright, so uh, as, this, uh, as this flaming lantern hits her, it does, it does shatter the lantern. Um, but she reels back in pain. And, uh, and you can see there's burn marks from the fire. But there's also parts where it looks like her flesh is just searing away. Oh, um, that's creepy. Uh, slow actions for Bismarck, Jinx, and Thagor. Can I get to Ruthless? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can.
Uh, yeah, she's just within reach. Okay. Did I move the right way? Ah, there she is. Yeah. Uh, could I tell what's wrong with her? Like, would healing help? Uh, healing would absolutely help. I will cast uh, my second heal. I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, so you uh, you come to and you regain uh, equal to half your healing rate. I get half my healing rate back. You said. Yep. So that's like one point. Don't knock it. You're up. But you, uh, yeah, you come to your head is pounding, uh, but you are conscious. Awesome. Uh, that leaves Jinx and Thagor. Uh, well, I I can't exactly go grab iron lanterns for reasons, so I'm gonna try the archery thing again. Do I still get the bonus? No, she knows I'm there and firing now, so... Yeah, but you do get your one boon as a rogue if you want. Yes. Oh, I'm using that. Ugh, no. All those good rolls earlier. I know, that's what happens. Alright. Dagor, he will attack with his battle axe. My dice luck holds true. Her turn. Uh, so for her first action, uh, she will. Say, hmm. She got hit with iron. So she will. She will turn her attention to Sif since Sif hit her with the iron. Uh oh. Uh, that should actually only be a 10. Then it's a fail, because my defense is 15. Um, so yeah, so she, she reaches out, but you can, you can tell she's, you can tell she's hurting. Good. Good. So yeah, she she does take several several attempts at you, uh, but you can see she's she's breathing she's breathing hard. Uh, her breath is very ragged, uh, and you can see where the where the iron has touched her. Her skin is like continuing to dry and flake off. Uh, next round. Some very useful information. But she just she turns on Sif with like with fury in her eyes. Uh that guard didn't go. Uh he did, he missed. Oh. He's close enough. He's going to go fast. Alrighty. Uh, so Bismarck. Oh, I should add uh, Ruth into the initiative track. Okay. Uh, uh, so Ruth, you can decide if you want to be fast or slow. I will be slow because I'm going to keep my distance and fire crossbow bolts. Okay. Alright. Uh, so Bismarck, Sif, and Thagor. Uh, I'm going to use my last magic dirt. Two whole points of damage. Right. 
So as the duck streaks out and catches her, she kind of glances at Bismarck, uh, briefly taking her attention off of Sif for just a second. And when she does, Thagor brings his uh, finely made iron battle axe uh, deep, deep into her back. And she like yells out in pain and agony. You do have to like a game where uh, where fairly potent bad guys are susceptible to the most common item to make weapons out of. Like it today. True that. Uh, Sif. Damn, I was really hoping that was going to take her out. Um, so right now I have a pole with uh, an empty something at the end, right? Because all the glass shattered a bit. Yep. Okay. But it's still made of iron. So I'm still going to swing it at her. Okay. Um, just keep using the flail? Yep. Okay. It's basically, it's not going to do extra fire damage. Oh, anymore. that was bad. Okay. Well, her turn. Well, she's got you and Thagor both. She only has, oh. and she only has three actions this turn. Uh, but she does have beans. It's reassuring as you might think. So against Sif. Uh, 17. Yeah, my defense is only a 15. Uh, so that is going to be 12 damage. Oh. 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 Uh, that's, that's out. Because I only had 10 health left. So again, she reaches out and she just like wraps you in vines and just squeezes and then drops Sif's limp form to the ground. Yeah. Uh, and then she will turn her attention to Thagar. Uh, 14 will just miss him. Uh, that is her fast actions. Uh, Jinx and Ruthless, both on slow. Alright, I'm gonna shoot again. Maybe eventually I'll hit. Okay. That is a hit. Yay! Yes. Ten? All right. Well, uh, as I say, in Critical Role, then how would you like to do this? Nice. Okay. Um, so, uh, Jinx can't handle iron, but as long as I think it believe as long as I'm not touching it, I'm fine. And arrowheads are very small and made of metal. Uh, so. What happens is, as she's focusing on Sif with the vines that are have basically crushing the life out of her, uh, this uh, piece of wood with the tiniest bit of iron on the tip uh, bursts through her, catching you know, sort of in gasp of surprise. All right. So yeah, so the the arrow basically. As she's like turning on Sif, and you can see her like crush almost the life out of Sif and drop her. She stands there for a moment, gloating, and then the arrow just <laughs> nice, neat through and through. And she drops to the ground. Uh, and as she does, uh, you can see some of the uh, some of the foliage around the village pretty much instantly just starts to to wither and fall apart same with the the vines that were holding sif and the uh and the the vines that were holding the uh or tearing apart the townspeople and stuff like now that she is no longer the force driving them they just instantly decay okay um obviously we are left with a really horrific aftermath um but i'd like to when Basically, when the vines wither and drop, I'd like to run to Sif's 
probably kind of limp and bloody body to see if she's still alive and if she is, if I can keep her alive. <laughs> Very limp and bloody. <laughs> Alright, uh, Ruthless, what would you like to do in your action? I would like to drink a healing potion. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't mind having a conversation with that bartender later either. Uh, so yeah, taking a healing potion will heal you equal to your heal rate at the end of the round. Okay. So I'll be back up to four. Uh, end of the round, Sif, you can roll a d6. Oh. oh, well, I was, I mean, I was, tr oh, or do I not get to first aid them until the next turn, basically? Yeah, it would be on the next turn. Okay, perfect. Alrighty, so, yeah, so, Sif's lifeless body drops to the ground, near lifeless body. Um, uh, assuming nobody else has anything to do, Jinx can run over and, uh, and administer some first aid. I'm going to give yeah. her a healing potion. Or that. Okay. So Just so we don't have to roll. Alright. Um, so yes, yeah, so uh, the healing potion will uh, will bring her back. I believe. Okay. I'm gonna double check that. I don't know if healing potions actually help dying people in shadow. I have no idea. They do smell faintly of alcohol. I wouldn't be able to recognize that. <laughs> Fair. Um, yeah, I won't bother looking up right now. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm reading you. the death bits. Yeah. Um, how how fast is it when they die? Um, so when you get when your damage equals your health, uh, you become okay. incapacitated. End of each round, yeah, okay. End of each round, you're dying. Roll a d6 on a one, you die. So, yeah, she she died. <laughs> no, she did not die because she was she was incapacitated. Okay. And then you then you roll to see if you stabilize or become dying. Oh, so that's what made me dying. Right. Gotcha. So at the end of this round, had uh, Bismarck and Jinx not gotten to you, you would have rolled a d6 to see if you died or not. Okay, let me check. Uh, but between uh, between Bismarck and uh, Jinx can make an intellect check. Yes. Yeah. That was the most lackluster animated roll, but the roll was high enough. I'll take it. Perfect. So yeah, so so Jinx gets in there with the the healing kit, manages to uh, manages to stabilize, um, uh, Sif, and then Bismarck comes over and pops up the uh, the healing potion, and uh, that way she will heal half her healing rate. Yay. All right. Um, what is the the? Uh, why? From what I can tell, or I understood the description, the only people that were under attack from the dryad were the ones that were out. The barkeep came out, and it didn't seem like he got attacked or mind controlled. And I'm guessing there's still some people in the various buildings. What's sort of happening around us as we we're doing? Yeah. That? So uh, there were a lot of people that were basically looking out their windows, kind of slack jawed because they fell victim to the dryad's charm. Um, but there, now that she is gone, the the charm effect fades, and uh, there's maybe half a dozen people left here: uh, the barkeep and his wife, um, Pell, uh, Jenny from was upstairs in the inn. Uh, but yeah, there's 
Like, the, this town has been, like, its population has been halved. Yeah, I mean, I was partially like, are people, like, freaking out at us? Are we dealing with, like, is there people. still a mob? Do we also, finding Jenny was definitely on my list. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there is, there's no more mob. Um, it looks like she basically, she just turned her wrath on whoever kind of crossed her path. Um, the people are largely, they're not, they, they look traumatized more than anything. Like seeing this full force of nature, um, and, and you guys also have this dawning realization that, you know, if you guys weren't here, this probably would not have happened. It's not, the, it's not the feeling of like, oh, look, we saved the town. It's that dawning realization that had you not saved Pell, all of these people would still be alive. Oh, I mean, I don't have this knowledge. But I feel like Sith might have a slightly different take on that, having seen the faces of all the children that, that were uh, sacrificed. Yep, a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to call this a win. I mean, this thing would have lived for maybe a thousand more years. So, yeah, we lost a dozen people, but we potentially saved maybe 500 or something. Freed the souls of all the children she'd eaten before. They were still inside her somehow. I'll have to do a little research on that. Um, and you see, like, kind of like stumbling through the stumbling through the uh, the aftermath. You see, like. Some of the people that were not killed by uh, by the dryad, you know, trying to find their trying to find their family, trying to find their loved ones amongst the uh, the horror. Well, all right, I have to head to bed. All right. Um, so yeah, so as as you guys, you know. <laughs> leave the wreckage behind you uh, once again leaving you know it, it parts of you think you did the right thing Sif you think you did the right thing but oh yeah Sif oh, yeah. definitely thinks she did the right thing yeah. uh, but... because she saw all those faces yeah. uh, but there, there, there's no denying that there was a there was a very high cost to pay With that, you guys... Digor says he believes we did right. Yeah. Uh, Congratulations, Jinx. villagers, you're saved. Jinx definitely uh, has a lot of conflicted feelings. There's definitely that, like, like how, you know, not knowing, not getting the vision that Sif got. Uh, there's still that, there's that, like, you know, these are, you know, how long were they killing children? But, oh, God, you know, like, people willing to sacrifice children don't really deserve... You know the salvation but at the same time like this was this is a very uncomfortable toll uh, there'll be a little bit of like loosening of that tightening in the chest when Sif shares about all of the faces of the dead and quite how many lives have been fed to it but there's still that like there's they were still lives <laughs> alright um, so yeah so we do have to call it but you guys survived the entire party survived I survived the game <laughs> hey <laughs> a little touch and go there for a bit a little bit a little bit uh, Sif does have a healing potion on her she will give it to Bismarck and say thank you very much that was uncomfortable. I've never been that quite that close to death. Right. And uh, with a little bit more experience under your belt, uh, when next time we play, you guys will be at level two in your chosen paths. Ooh. Very nice. Level two. Uh, so I will post the things to the Facebook as to what that actually means for you guys. Well, okay. I, I actually do have a question. Um, yes. 
does healing rate change at any point as we level up? Uh, healing rate is based off of your total health. It's a, it is a quarter of your total health. Oh, okay. That makes sense. And rounded down, probably. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. No problem. So thanks, everybody, for playing. Thank you, Chris, for running. And we'll yeah, see everybody. Thanks.